for him there. His kick wasn't the best. Yarrawonga tied up. Ruse links up with Wilson. His handball was poor. Cam Wilson for the Ruse. Back in towards space. Melksham. He's wrapped up in a big tackle by Wheeler. And we'll ball the footy up. Harry Wheeler's caused a little bit of a scruffle here, Robbie. That's good old-fashioned attack on the football. We like to see it on O&M Life. Yeah, he doesn't mind a bit of mixing a bit, Harry Wheeler. And it'll be a ball up. So true centre wing. Scoreboard's back, but just got to get that scoreboard right. It's seven to nothing. Here is Harry Wheeler, won the clearance, kicked it high to half forward. Numbers are here with the ruse, although gee, that was good work there by Cuppins. He's held without the footy, and Cuppins will take the free kick. He'll go across the ground. The kick's a little bit wayward, but it's okay. And it finds Einspawn. Einspawn goes short, finds Fothergill. Fothergill, 60 out from goal, looks for Williams. Beautiful pass, finds him. Forward pocket, half forward flank. It's a tight angle. He's only around about 30, 35 metres out, but he's got enough confidence. He's kicked the first goal of the game. Gus, I reckon you'll have a crack here. Five inside 50s early for Yarrawonga to two. They're well on top in getting the ball in their forward half of the ground. And Nick Fothergill's the one for Yarrawonga on the 40-wing statute. He's up to five disposals in this first quarter. Cracking Sunday crowd on, in here at John Ford Oval. A white Lee Williams comes in now. Kick on the way. No issue with the journey. Goodness me! This boy is red hot! He bangs through his second, another steal on goal of the day, contender. The Pigeons take it out to 2-1-13. They lead Coral Rubble again yet to score. And Scott Montgomery down on the boundary. Um, mate, what about this Williams? How impressive is that? Oh, it's unbelievable just the way he finished there. And as soon as he hit the boot, he was ready to celebrate too. He knew that was going through. But just the way the ball movement there, you could see with the bigger ground, they just were happy to chip it around the 50 and then use the big fella once he got on the lead. So just the way they want to use the footy going inside 50 here, Yarrawonga. He seems to have Cody Howard covered for strength and pace, Monty, which is... Oh, and, and about six inches taller than him too, Gussie. So it's going to be a tough one for Cody Howard today. I don't know how much longer they can leave that match up there. 2-1, the Pigeons to the Roos yet to score as they get the clearance up towards centre-half forward. Working hard is Marks, brings it to ground level and emerges with the football. Shimmies and shakes, gets on the right boot to centre-half forward. And Mattress Wilson gets amongst the play, a fan favourite here at Corowa, and his kick's beautiful to Bradke, 45 metres out on a slight angle. Yeah, great work from Mattress there, wasn't he? Just read it beautifully. And then just that nice little inside 20-metre pass, Gus. That is such a better option than bombing it high. The it's, pigeon's got a bit of height down there. That's something Matt Wilson's very good at, boys. He'll use the target coming at him and just sits it out in front, doesn't try to overkick the footy. So good use for his first touch. We don't like seeing players come out of the side, especially like Cade Cushit, but we do like seeing Mattress Wilson come in as Bradkey kicks from 45 metres and he pushes it across the face for a minor score. So the Roos are on the board. Korowa, 0-1-1 to Yarrawonga. 2-1 at 13. And that's on the steel line scoreboard. Wheeler's going to kick in from full back. Here's Robbie McKinlay, thanks to McRae Motors. Yeah, Harry Wheeler, footy in hand. has already had a little bit of it. Him and his brother, Willie, who's uh, starting to form a bit of a lethal midfield competition. Give him another stat, Brad Freak, as he plays on immediately. Kicks down the line. It's a good one. Turn he finds Jordy Urquhart. Now Urquhart comes back to midfield, finds Coburn. He's a natural left footer, and that suits him to swing the ball wide to O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer has it at half back. Pigeons get numbers. Kicks okay. Sexton did pretty well, though. Now he goes back. When it comes, he'll find Lee Masters. So Lee Masters in front of the scoreboard. Chips short. Finds Bo Seymour. So this is what Yarrawonga been good at all year. And they go short again, and they find Fothergill, Gus McLeod. Halfback. We've gone around about 10 minutes. It's 13 to 1. Leading is Yarrawonga. Uh, Nick Fothergill on the 40-wing stat sheet, Brad Freak. He's up to six disposals early in this first quarter. He's been everywhere for him. Harry Wheeler, as you touched on as well, Robbie, he's up to four disposals early. And his brother, Willie's just about to have his third. True centre wing broadcast side. Willie Wheeler goes down the line. It's a nice-looking kick to Irons. Pawnee goes inboard. Coburn, true centre wing broadcast side, chips over the top with some nice vision to Ironsporn. He can't quite get the footy to sit as Wheeler gets amongst the action. The kick had too much on it for Williams. He's going to get a chance here, Williams. He handballs over the top to Fronfelder, who went for a little underground kick. Wasn't his best effort. I reckon he stubbed his toe on the way through as well. We'll ball the footy up 20 metres out on a slight angle, deep in the forward line for Yarrawonga. I think he went the check side there, boys, and um, just might have missed the boot. No, I wasn't sure what to give do. Give credit to Cameron Wilson, boys. One of the best tackles you would see. It was unbelievable. You end up smothering. Snap by Willie Wheeler. This looks all right. That is straight through for the Pigeons' third goal. 
Willie Wheeler nails it. Steel on goal of the day, contender. And on that steel on scoreboard, it's 19 to 1. And the Pigeons are off to a flyer. Absolutely cracking call. Robbie McKinlay, thanks to McRae Motors. Speaking of McRae Motors, should have seen the big Malibu boat they've got parked out the front now. Robbie... That was all, mine. With all the years of service on OM Live, you should be able to buy one of them by now. Uh, Scott Montgomery's boundary side for the Newey. He's got it on lay by, I think, Gussie, so he's ready to go. But yeah, you see with the ball movement there from back to front with the Yarrawonga team. They just want to hold on to a controller. They're happy to go back and around and just keep moving it, chipping it forward, chipping it forward. But they are starting to take ground quite easily and they're shifting the corridor defence pretty comfortably here. Yarrawonga lead 3 1 19 to the Roos, one behind on the steel line scoreboard. Damian Wilson emerges with the footy at the centre ball up. Yarrawonga have numbers, and they get a clearing kick away through Fothergill. Kicks out towards True oh. Centre Wing, but the bounce does not favour a teammate. Here's a go for the Roos. They kick long down the line. Good use of the body. Coming in nicely was Logan Morey. Mattress Wilson. Handballs over the top. Coburn. Einspawn for the Pigeons. Handballs back to Masters across the halfback flank. O'Dwyer goes by hand, and they're going to slow things down through Sharp. They switch the footy to the steel line scoreboard pocket. And Kyra's pressure, Robbie, is something that's really caught my eye. They need to capitalise and turn it into goals as Seymour plays on across the half-back flank. Yeah, he does. He found a father girl who gave it back to Seymour. Seymour running centre wing, broke a tackle, now drives off the left foot. Not a bad kick chance for Cuppins, and he misses a chest mark. Good pressure there from Joey Hansen, and Hansen ensures it comes out over the boundary line. Brad Freak, what are you seeing for 40 winks on that stat sheet of yours? Yeah, Nick Fothergill's up to eight disposals in this first quarter. Just want to touch on Gus saying about the, the pressure from Kyra. Were they... They've got two boys that in Cam Wilson, uh, sorry, Damian Wilson and Matt Grantham, the first and second in total tackles in the competition to start. So it shows their pressure they really want to put around the ball carriers. Tyson got the tap, who came into the match after the, the withdrawal of Lockie Howe. The kick forward was intercepted by Masters, and he kicked the centre wing, and it's knocked out over the boundary line by Damian Wilson. We'll have a throw in, Gus. The scoreboard shows around about seven minutes. Put about six minutes on it, Gus. Yeah, I reckon we're about 13 minutes gone. Yarrawonga lead on the steel line scoreboard, 19 to one. 19 to 1, Robbie. It's a hot start as the football gets brought back into play. Robinson brings it down for the ruse. Yarrawonga have numbers through Wheeler. Gets a kick inside forward 50. Williams is the target. Howard had front position and trickles it out of bounds for a throw in as we cross boundary side. Scott Montgomery for the New Market Hotel. Yeah, boys. Um, obviously, Cora's not too happy with this start. You probably hear Jermo and the effects, Mike. He's really trying to get his message out there nice and strong. Just telling them to make sure they keep moving the ball because they're just going a bit into their shells here. Boundary throw in. 45 metres out from the Pigeons' goal. Free kick. It's going to go the way of Yarrawonga. The umpire's going to... I think they're throw it back They're throwing in. it back, yeah, in. back in. Nice bit of interaction there between Scott Montgomery and the runner for Cora. I'll right tell you what, it's the slowest runner I've seen in a long time in this pink. <laughs> throw him under the bus, Monty. Yeah, it's Dean Drews, if anyone's uh, listening. Yarrawonga kicked towards the Williams direction, but Jared Hatton flies across the pack nicely. Takes a strong mark. And they're going to try and play on over the top here. That had a bit too much on it for Hatton. And apologies to Joey Hanson. I called that one wrong. They bring it back in towards play. And the umpires found a free kick for holding the footy. It's going to go the way of the Roos. Jared Hatton, the Corowa Cricket Club coach. In his first year at the Roos. He's starting to cement his spot across the back line. He is. It might be a bit of news out of the Corowa Cricket Club around coaching too. So as... You got another job, Robbie. No, <laughs> Damien no, Wilson doesn't. has it. And he goes long to Robinson, but chipping in and taking a good grab is Kyle Tyson, who's been really impressive on debut. And he punts a mongrel, swinging, turning, top-spinning type of kick. Intercepted there at half-back by Jai Lane. Went short. Now they've got Cameron Wilson. It came from his brother Damien, who got it back for a 1-2 with a magnificent pass. Found Illy Nastasi, the former tennis great. Kicks it off the left foot. Here's Tommy! <laughs> Down went Tommy. The ground shook. Picked up by Lane. Jared kicked it a long way backwards. And he's found Billy Hansen, who'll have to get on with it in a hurry. He had a chance to go short the marks and he said no and Gus he's going to have to make sure this one counts well he's going to have to pump it long does Billy Hanson where's Tommy Goodwin he's not there but it's a kick to great Robinson kick. that's beautiful great kick young man all class from Corowa they waited for the right option to emerge and they executed beautifully Monty for the Newmarket Hotel yeah and Robinson was actually running back towards the goals there and just the kick made him turn back around so the kick made him hit that space so really smart use there by Billy Hanson bit happening in the goal square too boys a little bit of argy-bargy. Yeah. Tommy Goodwin, a little bit ginger to get down from that contest, oh. Robbie. Jeez. So, Robinson. 
will kick this one on goal from 35 metres out on a slight angle, and he's kicked it across the face for a minor score. So the Roos, two behinds to Yarrawonga, 3-1-19 on the steel line scoreboard. As we had a Brad Freak for the 40-wing stat sheet. Willie Wheeler's up to six disposals in this quarter, guys, and he's kicked that goal as well. He's been really influential for the Yarrawonga Pigeons early in this first quarter. Mitchell kicked it to O'Dryer, and O'Dryer kicked it back to Mitchell, and Mitchell will kick it across the ground to Masters. So rack a few up there, Brad, on the stat sheet. Masters' kick is magnificent to Sexton. He runs off half-back. He had one bounce. He had a second bounce. Ran his full measure. Kicked it over the top. Cuppins was the target but chipping in was Bruce inside handball to Sexton was magnificent long driving kick keep an eye on Williams and Williams marks from where he almost kicked the first goal of the game magnificent transportation of the football by Yarrawonga all the way from defence to attack and Williams will have a shot on goal he's kicked two already chance to kick the pigeons fourth it'll be a case of deja vu here Robbie but he seems to have brought his goal kicking boots to the John Ford Oval in Corowa Impressive debut last week, and he decides he goes with a little bit of a banana kick. It no problem for Lee Williams. He bangs through number three, and we're about 20 minutes, only about 15 minutes into the first quarter. Yarrawonga lead 4 1 25. Kyle Rubble again one behind. Brad Freak. Yeah, nine inside 50s to four early in this quarter in favour of the Yarrawonga Pigeons. Also, three inside marks inside 50 for Yarrawonga, all to Lee Williams. So there'd be red flags going off everywhere in the Akarawa coaches box for those three goals as well. Obviously, beautiful work there by Young Sexton down the outside wing to be able to get done. As we touched on, Nick Fothergill and, and Willie Wheeler are the two so far for Yarrawonga. They've been really getting the first use of the ball. Nick Fothergill's up to eight disposals, and Willie Wheeler six with a goal as well. Brad Freak for 40 winks on OM Live. 25 plays one, Yarrawonga's way. Goodwin and Symes both almost left the football behind. Ball trickles in towards space. Corowa off the half back flank was Hatton. Probably not his best kick. Up the line trying to find a teammate. Diving on top of it nicely was Filipponi. Yarrawonga emerged with numbers. Going to try and play some methodic football here as they go by hand to Wheeler. Right foot kick along the Murray River side of the ground as Williams works his way up to true centre wing to get involved in the contest. He's a long way from home and there's not many players to kick to. So he chips nicely over the top to Coburn. Left foot kick in towards space. Their work rate's really good here as Wiley Marks, 75 metres from home, lowers the eyes and Williams on the lead once again. This is probably just on his range, Robbie, so he chips it into the space and Fronfelder takes an uncontested mark, 40 metres out on a 45 degree angle. They just haven't got the footy, Cora, have they? And when Yarrawonga have got it, I remember Freaky made a comment a couple of weeks ago about them, outside of Wangaratta, the best side you've seen play because of the way they will use the football. Yeah, then they're just on the outside, I reckon they've got really good leg speed as well. They can break the lines as we've seen, deliberate play today to be get in space and use that leg speed in their favour. Fronfelder opens up the arc, it's a helicopter punt and Tommy Goodwin, oh. like a goalkeeper oh on the line. He's in trouble here, Tommy. That's a free kick. Has kept that one. Yeah, they've paid it too high, boys, and then yep. 50 for abuse as well. Yep. So Tommy concedes a, a free kick, and Corowa concedes a, a goal they did not need to. So they'll go through and put their fifth on the board from point blank range. Yeah, raise his forearm and court. So Timmy Lawrence, easiest of goals you'll kick. And Yarrawonga, 5 1 to Corowa. Two behinds on the steel line scoreboard. Scott Montgomery boundary side for the New Market Hotel. Almost damage control time here for Cora. This yeah, could blow out. Absolutely, could boys. And um, you can just see there, every time they go inside 50, this got options galore. That time they went to Fronfelder. Uh, the time, and three times now, um, the big fella Williams has taken a mark. So he's looked really dangerous. So they're going to have to just try and maybe get some numbers behind the footy and just control this for the next five minutes until quarter time. Around the ground, so Mr. Stove's pool world in the AFL. The Gold Coast Suns and the Dockers are level at 15 apiece. Four marks inside 50 early for Lee Williams. We thought er going in the pregame, he'd be with Kate Cusher going out. They're going to have a lot of troubles down there trying to contain him. And early, their, their signs are right there. Goodwin stood on the ground and got the knock. Picked up by Wiley, gave it to Sexton, gave it back to Wiley. Comes across the ground and finds Ryan Bruce half back. He'll go short to Mitchell. He does that. And Mitchell, gee, I like the look of this lad. Played a beauty. He's only 17. He's come through the junior ranks. Still at school. And a beautiful pass. It hits Sexton fair in the noggin. Bruce cleaned up the crumbs. And he kicks it to Williams, who can't mark. Might have got a free kick, I thought. Play on was a call. Off the ground there was Maxi Taylor. Eventually it comes back to Barrett. He couldn't control the footy. Tommy Gooden got in the road in a fashion. But I think Barrett's going to get a free kick. He will at half back. 
Got one a little bit high, Gussie McLeod. Nah, just a bit low, actually, Robbie. I think they paid a uh, trip. He just oh. sort of got grabbed by the foot. There you go. And his kick was a good one, Gussie. And it's found Jared Lane. Well, that stumped me. As the kick goes out wide, trying to find Melksham. Ironsporn with some good pressure. A really good contest here. Give that one to Ironsporn. He did some really good defensive work to cause a 50-50. Ball just hugging the boundary line. And we'll ball the ball back in. About 75 metres out from the Ruse goal. Brad Freak on the 40-wing stat sheet. Yeah, Yarrawonga having all the ball in their forward half. 11 inside 50s to 4 in the early in this first quarter. And just the midfielders for Corowa just haven't been able to get their hands on it. Uh, Cam Wilson, 4 disposal. Jai Lane, 3. And Darcy Melksham, only the 2 so far. So they just really need to get their prime ball winners in and around the action. Robinson had front spot and he brought it to ground level. The Ruse going to handball backwards towards true centre wing. Big crunching tackle applied. Emerging with it. Probably wasn't the best to Barrett, who's come into this side today for the Roos. From all reports, a really exciting player. He's from Bell Ranald Robbie, but that handball wasn't his best. Fronfelder gets amongst the action and kicks long down the line to Williams, who's 50 from home, has a shot from oh. tight on the boundary. Ooh. And that won't affect, or it does affect the scorekeepers. Across the face for a minor score. Lee Williams has brought his own footy to the John Ford Oval today, Robbie. He's looked good. He kicked five goals, four last week. Three goals, one already today. As Joey Hansen will bring the ball back into play. We've gone around about 30 minutes on the GJ Gardner Holmes time clock. The kick in was okay. And the next kick makes Max Taylor work a bit for it. It's okay. Cam Wilson picked up the crumbs. A little chipping kick. And he's found Charlie Nastasi. Played on immediately, immediately. Did Charlie. Bruce chases him. Oh, Bradkey chipped over his own feet. Chance here for Logan Morey. Oh, oh Tommy. Big Tommy ran into him and went back for a little bit more. He smothered him. Somewhere in that tackle there is, is either Ryan Bruce or Logan Morey somewhere. There could be 10 of them down there, there's Robbie. A, there's a few of them there and Big Tommy split the pack. And it's gonna, it's going to be a ball up. Not We're in about 65 out from the uh, Yarra Coral Rubble and Gold. Gee, they need one here late. And Tommy's might have won himself a free kick. He has the big man. So... He, oh, he shows the ball, and now he gives it off on the left. Hatton from long range, goes long, top of the goal square. Bradkey's a chance. Bradkey marks! Gee, that's a good grab. Right in the goal square, he'll go back and kick it from about 15 metres, and this one is badly needed. An elite body and paint mark of the day, Robbie. Absolutely superb to have them on board on o &M Live, but Bradkey... Showing maturity beyond his years. A beautiful mark, Robbie. Yeah, good quick entry in from Jared Hatton. And Bradkey beat a pack of three. And he comes in and he bangs it through. The Roos get their first late in the quarter. And it is Yarrawonga 5-2-32. They lead Coral Rubberland 1-2-8. That is on the Aubrey GJ Gardner Holmes time clock. And it's on the Steel Line scoreboard. Monty, the Roos actually haven't looked that bad when they've got the footy. Just going inside 50 is where it's really letting them down. Yeah, there's probably just a few skill errors when they've got it to sort of half forward. They've just turned it over. And, and Yarra's been able to control it from there. So that's probably the one thing they've got to clean up. Either get it nice and deep so they can try and control it and get their smalls into the game. Or they've just got to lower their eyes and hit those targets when they're coming up from half forward. 32 plays eight favouring Yarrawonga over the ruse on the steel line scoreboard great to have your company for Sunday football on o and Live, first quarter action for Blacklocks Motor Group in Wodonga with Gus McLeod, Robbie McKinlay Brad Freak on the 40 wing stat sheet and Scotty Montgomery for the New Market Hotel, balls in the centre of the John Ford Park in Corowa, deep into time on on the Aubrey GJ Gardner Holmes time clock, Tommy Goodwin brought it to ground level for the ruse as it just pinballs away, and Yarrawonga get a clearing kick up towards centre half forward. Getting amongst the action nicely is Cuppins. As Yarrawonga have a bit of defensive work to do. The Ruse clear defensive 50, kick long down the line, lane at ground level. Should get penalised for a high tackle here. <laughs> sort of ducked into it, didn't he? A bit slid. Not a bad call, probably, as long as you're consistent with it. Against Sexton, we'll ball the footy up. True centre wing, Murray River side of the ground. He's the Big Mac for McRae Motors. There's Big Tommy. Oh, beautifully picked up by Thovagul. Give him another one there, Brad Freak. Short handball by Coburn was okay. Out towards Willie Wheeler. Applied a good tackle. Play on's a call. A kick off the ground was okay by Panag. Panag juggling effort there for Urquhart for Yarrawonga. Off half back. Gee, not a bad kick. Clean bowled uh, Masters. And sitting at it now, running off half back. The Ruse, they take the ball back into midfield. It was Jide Lane who brought it forward. On to Cam Wilson. On the Jared Lane. He kicks the ball a mile. He'll go close from here. Jared Lane winds up, loads up, and bangs through a steel line goal of the day. 
Ruse get two in a row. Margin now back to 18 points. 2-2-14. Two, two, Yarrawonga 5-2-32. And we have gone uh, 26 minutes on the steel line scoreboard. And the... <laughs> Aubrey, GJ Gardner, home time clock. Hey, Robbie, you got a new house or something being built with steel on? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. I was going to say, looking Jeez. after steel on today. Great to have them <laughs> on board. Mind. Monty for the newie. Yeah, boys, you see there, once Cora were able to access that middle of the ground, they could open the game up with two Wilsons being involved. And obviously, once you get in the hand of Jared Lane, he's a nice, long left foot kick and was able to finish the work off. Great work, Monty, for the New Market Hotel. Tommy Goodwin in a 50-50, brings it to ground level. Fothergill gets amongst the action. The Yarrawonga Pigeons emerge with the footy up towards centre half forward. A bit too much on that one for Cuppins. Handballs to Fothergill. Left foot kick inside forward. 50's okay. Hanson, bit of work to do defensively here as Mead gets amongst the action. Irons pawn to Mead over the top trying to find Fronfelder. Bit too much on it for him. The Pigeons got a bit of defensive work to do as the Ruse clear their lines. Not the best kick and it's going to trickle out of bounds for a boundary throw in. Right in front of the canteen here at the John Ford Park in Corowa. 32 plays, 14 on the steel line scoreboard, favouring the Roos. Brad Freak for 40 wings. Ten, uh, Nick Fothergill's up to 10 disposals in this first quarter. Willie Wheeler's up to 8, so they've been really damaging so far. And the inside 50s, Corowa's only had 6, been able to hit the scoreboard 4 times early in this first. Good one, who's just starting to come into the game a bit, making a presence felt there. Wheeler knocked off it. Damien Wilson got through traffic. Handball to no one really. Probably had the boundary line in mind as much as anything. Good work out the back by Panag. Got it back to Wilson. Got it back towards Panag. Stayed over the footy. Knocked it out. Wilson. Damien again. Kick along the ground. Now picked up here by Sharp. He'll give up a bit of ground and goes back to Masters. Masters with a terrible spinning kick but an effective one. Finds Fothergill right in the centre of the ground here at the John Ford Oval. 28 minutes gone. Fothergill drives the ball to half forward, Williams the tuck, well done Howard got a little kick off the ground, fortuitously falls away of uh, Filipponi, got one off to Billy Hanson and now at centre wing, the Ruse are going to have to load it up from here, Gus they bring it back into the middle of the ground to Billy Hanson and they're going to play on, off the half back line is Howard, trying to expose Williams going the other way, Robinson takes a good mark out in front and wants to pump it inside forward 50 but missed the reliable in the hole once again, Masters intercepts to the Pigeons Kicks dangerously in towards a bit of traffic. Yarrawonga have numbers and they mop it up as they come streaming through the centre of the John Ford Park. In towards Symes. True centre half forward. Great handles for the Pigeons. He's going to have a time to do a U-turn here. Symes on a dime. Inside forward 50. Up and under kick to Williams at ground level. Wheeler's there. Can't quite collect the footy. And as the siren sounds for quarter time, a big spark of energy going coast to coast there, Yarrawonga. And they currently hold A little hold bit going on, lead. boys. A little bit going on here. Oh, under yeah. the side. There is Monty. There is a little bit going on here. A little bit argy-bargy. Tommy Goodwin looks a bit too knackered to get amongst it, the big fella. <laughs> He's had to run a long way to get there. Too far away from it. But we'll take a break here on quarter time as the melee comes to an end. Quarter time at the John Ford Park in Corowa. Corowa trail 2-2-14 to Yarrawonga. 5-2-32 on the steel line scoreboard. Plenty more to come on the other side of the break. Sunday football on O&M Live. Great to have your company. And on O&M Live, you won't miss a thing. Watching the game at home is good, but watching the game on the big screen with all your mates, all the atmosphere and the great food and beer is pretty hard to beat. And it's all here at the locker room at the SSNA. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. 
It starts with yes. <laughs> Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where there's industry qualified trainers. Go where students come first. Go for the community. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it. With Go TAFE. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. <laughs> The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Go to create your future. Go for free support services. Go to get in-demand skills. Go and follow your own path. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it. With Go TAFE. Hi, I'm Kylie King. I first fell in love with this region as the Prime News sports presenter. Sometimes this feels like my second home. I love our historic towns and vibrant cities, our passion for sport, and of course, the people who make it special. And now I get to share what's important in our region with Kev Poulton. So join us, Kylie and Kev for breakfast, weekday mornings from 6 on 2AY and 3NE. Somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad, and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. Welcome back to the John Ford Oval in Corowa. Yarrawonga, 5 2 32. They lead this one a quarter time to the Ruse, 2 2 14. As we go to Brad Freak for the Optus Quarters, best for your local Optus stores, Aubrey Wodonga and Wangaratta. Yeah, in the first quarter there for Coral Rutherglen, I thought Keelan Bradkey up forward was really, really strong for him. He took two marks inside 50 and kicked a goal late for him, which really got them back on a bit of level terms. I know they're a couple of goals down on the scoreboard, but they just got a good run of momentum late in that first quarter there. I thought Damien Wilson in the middle of the ground, who's ever reliable for him, had nine disposals in that first quarter, was, out, was really good for him. And on the Yarrawonga side, Obviously, Nick Fothergill, one of the the couple of the recruits of their Optus quarters, best for that first quarter. Fothergill and Lee Williams as well. Uh, Nick Fothergill up to 11 disposals early was outstanding. Lee Williams kicked a few, uh, kicked three goals in that first quarter as well, and Willie Wheeler as well kicked a goal and had eight disposals. If we have a look at the 40 wink stat sheet, we'll go through the goal kickers in that first quarter. If we look for the Yarrawonga side of things, obviously as we touched on, Lee Williams kicked three goals, which looked really really dangerous up forward, and Willie Wheeler and Tim Lawrence kick singles. And on the Corowa side of things, Jared Lane and Keelan Bradley, you've kicked a goal each. If we have a look at the stats for that first quarter, as we touched on, Damien Wilson for Corowa had nine disposals, and his brother Cam and Jai Lane both had five as well. And on the Yarrawonga side of things, Nick Fothergill had 11, and Willie Willow was eight, had eight, and Lee Masters down back had seven. Inside 50s, there's a slight advantage there to Yarrawonga, who had 13 to seven for Corowa, but Corowa have been able to have four scoring shots when they've been able to go for inside 50. All the other team stats are fairly even. Centre clearances, four apiece, uh, free kicks, four each, and marks inside. 50 Yarrawongas had five, four of those to Lee Williams and three to Kyra in the first quarter. Comprehensive, that's why he's the best in the business. Brad Sprinkles Freak on LM Live as we go boundary side to Monty for the New Market Hotel. No surprise, Peter German still has the troops uh, in their huddle. The supporters have even vacated, yeah. but Germo <laughs> still got them there. He's still going, boys, and he was very animated. He just said, We're just laying down. We're just waiting for something to happen, someone else to do it. Let's bloody take it on ourselves and do it because at the moment, Yarra are just able to do whatever they want. 
important with the footy, which which is what basically what Mark Wiley followed up. If we control it and we can keep hold of it, we'll be able to do what we want when we're going forward. And once we break centre, let's get it nice and deep, which they have been so far. The Roos really need a hot start here, Robbie, to get themselves back in the game. They need probably the first two goals this quarter. Yeah, I think what I like about Yarra Wonga too, if you have a look in the midfield there, they've got the two wheeler boys and um, Mark Wiley. And Wiley this year played predominantly up forward, but with Williams coming back in now, Freeze him up. he has, and mm. I reckon that's made a big effect around the ground. Good. Wiley's just contributed in a lot of little areas today, so I think I think a lot of the sides are starting to realise if you're going to beat Wangaratta, and they're the side you're going to beat, you got to have a really good midfield. So no good getting too funky. Start working on how you're going to have the best midfield you possibly can find and give yourself a chance. And I reckon that's what they've done really well today. It and sets them up, and they're still getting really good use of the footy with Symes. Coming back into this side, he's yep. only playing key forward, but what a great luxury to have as your second ruckman. Of course, Lockie Howe out today with an ankle injury. As the umpire holds the footy aloft to start the second quarter for Wodonga Pumps and Mowers. You're listening to O&M Live with the Big Mac, Robbie McKinlay. Good on you, Gussie, and Tommy Goodwin, who won the tap. I thought the significant reason uh, Yarrawonga, so Cora got back into that game the last 10 minutes, Tommy Goodwin came into the game. He, he gave away a bit of a, a naughty free kick to make for their fifth goal. Then since that point, I don't know, it might have been a bit of a kick up the butt for Tom. So come on, I'm better than that. And he's really, really impacting the game. So, and just even here, that we're going to have our third bet throw up here. They haven't been able to get a clearance quickly out of the game. I think that's something that German would have addressed. As Goodwin gets another tap, kick off the ground. Coral will go forward now. Filippone leads in the race of the ball in front of O'Dwyer. Oh, Filippone got it, O'Dwyer wrapped him up and that will be another ball up, Gussie. So about 75 around from the Coral Ravagan goal. We've just started the second quarter. Yarrawonga lead 32 to 14 if you've just joined us. So the umpire throws this one aloft. Yarrawonga have numbers around the football. Wilson, I thought he got taken high. The umpire said nothing in it and we'll ball the footy up. In the back, Once Gussie. Again. No, it was in the back. So it's going to be a free kick to the Ruse. Wilson, Damien. Right foot kick, inside forward 50, trying to find Bradkey is beautiful. And this is what I like about Cora when they're going inside forward 50. They look at their best probably when they wait for the right option. Yeah, and a, there's a bit of room created there for Bradkey. And Seymour got a little bit lost. And he was a bit annoyed that his teammates didn't help him out there. Three marks inside 50 early as well for Keelan Bradkey. He's, he's having that bit of a presence in the forward line that we that we've talk, spoke about in the pregame that he Ruse really, really needed today. He's already kicked one, and I reckon this is just on his distance. He'll have to kick it 51 metres on a slight angle. Bradkey makes nice connection. It's really good connection. Kalen Bradkey's got two, and the Roos kick a much-needed goal to start the second quarter for Wodonga Pumps and Mowers. 3-2, the Yarrawonga, or Cora rather, Glenn, to Yarrawonga 5-5, five, five, and we'll cross boundary side. Scott Montgomery for the Newmarket Hotel. Bradkey. One of the more emerging stars of this competition. Yeah, absolutely, boys. And he just showed there. He's able to work up in a good space. And when you, you good ball use like Damian Wilson getting the footy 50 out, you know you want to lead into good space because he's going to hit you nine times out of ten. And that just showed there. If they can continue with that, they're going to get some more looks at goal. So all of a sudden, Robbie, it's only a two-goal lead. Two-goal, yeah. And that really good work in that centre where they forced two ball-ups, didn't allow the ball to go out, then eventually got a clearance. There's Tommy Goodwin again. Got his hands first on the ball. Now he gets a hurry kick. And it goes towards Barrett, I think it was, was picked up and dumped. And it's going to be a ball up. So already a, a, a big improvement inside that four, in that centre square there. So just stalling, not letting Yarrawonga run. It's going to be it's like up by Peachy. And we'll toss the ball in the air. Simon's got that tap. But Damien Wilson was there. He was picked up and dumped straight away. And we're going to have another ball up. So we've had five ball ups inside the first three minutes, Gus. But... From a Coral Rubbergan perspective, you don't mind that. Oh, I don't mind it either, Robbie. Let their better players get amongst the football. Make Yarrawonga work for it. Good one. Working his way into the contest with oh, a clearance. Oh. Gets the football inside. Forward 50. Back in towards space for Cam Wilson. Kicks towards the top of the goal square. It's a bit of kamikaze footy here. As Yarrawonga try to get a clearing kick. And Mark Wiley sits underneath that one. And marks nicely in the back pocket. For the Pigeons, umpire's calling to play on, so he kicks down the line, the kick's okay. The mark's been taken by Lawrence on the left half-back flank for Yarrawonga. In front of the bridge that leads into Wagania. Left foot kick down the line. It's an up-and-under kick, probably not the best. 
Ball comes to Grenlow now. It's a contest. He's a go for Coburn, who's impressed me today. Left foot kick down the line, trying to find Williams. Give that one to Howard with a nice spoil. The Stars eating handballs over the top, trying to find Howard once again. It's a low chiseling kick. Asked a fair bit of his teammate. And the Roos are going to emerge with the football. The kick was okay from Ian Hansen, but Yarrawonga have numbers and they mop up across the centre half back position, Robbie. Yeah, Wiley has ball in hand. He held his composure, gave the ball back to O'Dwyer. Kicks all right to Mitchell. And Mitchell, he's a left footer, so he'll look to bring this one back in. He has an option with Brandon Symes, and he's just told to hold up. So this is what they do. He'll go across half back, and he finds O'Dwyer. And O'Dwyer, with a nice kick, finds Sharp. So Sharp on the uh, Mur on the Murray Bridge side of the ground. A good kick to Coburn. Goes over his head, and it's picked up there by, it might be Billy Hansen. At the back flank it is for Cora Rubberglen. He'll charge the ball down the forward line. A nice penetrating kick found Cam Wilson. Inside handball was okay. Got it on to Penag. Goes short. Kick there. Oh, Masters. Too good. He read it beautifully, Gussie. And he marks the last slide of the defence for the Pigeons. They lead 32 to 20. Almost five minutes gone in the second quarter. And that's for Aubrey G.J. Gardner Holmes. Well, that it certainly is, Robbie. So Dwyer. Who's slowly working his way into this season. He's been impressive in a couple of games. Kicks long down the line. Murray River side of the wing. In towards a bit of space. Wiley trying to get himself amongst the action. Paddles it to himself and regathers the footy. And the umpire said he got taken in a high free kick. So it's going to go the way of Yarrawonga. And Wiley's been called to play on. That's dangerous to big <laughs> Tommy Good. Well, I thought he was actually trying to kick it to him. As Yarrawonga emerge across centre half back. The kick's not the best because Illing the Stars is in the hole here, Robbie. And he takes a good mark, true centre wing, broadcast side. He does. It's a good kick to finds Filipponi. Filipponi goes long. Chance here oh. for Jared Lane. Good kick. And this will be not a problem distance-wise for Jared Lane. He'll kick it from about 47 metres, Brad Freak. Yeah, in the first quarter, Yarrawonga were 13 inside 50s to 7. In this second quarter, haven't had an inside 50 yet, Yarrawonga. The three for Corowa. And they've been able to kick that goal with Kaelin Bradley earlier and Jared Lane lining up for his second as well. The duo of those guys have been really causing some trouble for the Pigeons up forward. I've got a nice stat for you too, Brad. I normally don't delve into the stats, but I'll give you one in a minute. Cut and sprinkles lunch. Jared Lane comes in, kick. Beautiful kick! Jared Lane never looked like missing. Absolutely not. He gets his second. Sunjan goal of the day contender. And the Roos have kicked the last four goals. They're back in this game. They trail it by just six points. It's 32 to 26. This is a cracker. That it certainly is. Monty for the New Market Hotel. You can see why Germo held him up for so long at quarter time. He's got a game plan and the Roos are trying to stick to it now. Yeah, what they've done, they've moved the lanes around. So Jared's gone forward and Jai's playing in the middle at the moment. So they've got that extra tall option inside 50. And as you can see with Brad Key and Lane being the two goal scorers for this quarter so far, it's working. Tommy Goodwin's working his way into this game, Robbie. And yeah. it's scary to think what he can do when he gets fit again. Of course, a broken kneecap for Tommy Goodwin. That's and it was a suplex. <laughs> well, talk us through that one, Sprinkles. Yeah, it was just an old-fashioned suplex. You see, something out of the WWE, that one. <laughs> He's a big man to get up and under Tommy Goodwin. Bloody good effort from young uh, Tyson. He could be going to the, the next Olympics in the weightlifting. The umpire's found a free oh, kick on the footy. I love Tommy Gooden. He's Goodwin. a star. I love him. We've got to go. We've got to have a, a few beers with I'm Tommy. I'm not having at, a beer at with the him. Baldale Hotel. He'll leave his car me. there for a month. He pumps it long to centre half forward. Masters was in the hole. Regathers it at ground level. Football pinballing around as Yarrawonga try to exit defensive 50. Handball was poor. Masters, good tackle applied. And we'll ball the footy up. Just outside the ruse, forward 50 on the Murray Bridge side of the ground. And Coro are starting to build into this game. Robbie, we've played eight minutes on the Aubrey G.J. Gardner home time clock. I've got that stat ready any time. Uh, whistle, it's going to free kiss, going to go over to Yarrawonga. Big thing for Coro Rutherland to keep in mind here, people, is that they need to be in this game in the last close to three quarter time because in the last two quarters, last quarters that Yarrawonga have played right, here we go. against Wangaratta Rovers and uh, last week against Wodonga, they have not kicked a goal. So rehashing write some, that one down, Freaky. Rehashing some old content from the All-Rounders yesterday is the big back. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, if it's wow. good, you use it twice. Yeah, Harry Wheeler, Mark, centre wing, Murray, river side of the ground. And he comes in board. That's a nice kick. Fovagul marked it in front of Tyson. So they've got the slow build going here. Wheeler runs loose through the midfield. 
Father Gill, his stats for 40 winks, please, Brad, as he chips to uh, Dwyer. He just had his 12th disposal. Kicks long into forward 50. Not a good kick, though. And this one is marked there by Barrett at half-back. Uh, sorry, Saunders. And he goes short, Gussie. And he finds Darcy Melcham. Oh, he's starting to work his way into the game as well. His kick's OK, trying to find Campbell. Oh, oh Dwyer whoa. absolutely poleaxed him. I don't know if there was much wrong with that. It was a fair bump from what I saw, Robbie, but I tell you what, I think Kane Aaron Archers will have to have a look at that one during the week. Good old-fashioned footy. Both players get up from it cleanly. And I like that, Robbie. Bit of spice in the game. Shoulder Taylor on shoulder, mate. Kicks inside forward 50. Your boy, Robbie, Mitchell, emerges with the football. Kicks down the line. Finds a teammate in Coburn. Left foot kick. True centre wing to Williams, who's worked his way up the ground. Howard provided a good contest and will ball the footy back into play. Just favouring the ruse side of true centre wing. Scott Montgomery, boundary side for the Newmarket Hotel. Yeah, Kyra's really got this game on their terms at the moment. They're able to control the footy and move it deep. He's going to make sure when they're going inside 50, use the big boys, hit the targets, because at the moment it's just rebounding way too easily. Brad Key and Tyson. Brad Key won the tap. And it's going to be picked up by Sexton. Tight to the boundary. Keeps it in. Goes short to Fothergill. So Fothergill now comes across the ground. Kicks OK. Finds Harry Wheeler. Runs with the footy, drives it long, inside forward 50. Williams couldn't get it. Howard did well. Releasing handball to Hatton. Hatton with a raking left footer. It might be okay for Nastasi if it sits. Oh, it oh. doesn't. Beautifully read there by Sharp. Inside handball. Back to Willie Wheeler over the top to Ryan Bruce. He had to let go, and he did. Nastasi just knocked him off the footy. Harry Wheeler went back in. A big pack of players over the ball, and it will be balled up. Almost on centre wing, we've gone 10 and a half minutes, second quarter action. It's a six point lead to Yarrawonga. Yeah, Corowa have all the inside 50s in this quarter compared to the first. They've got five to two to start this second term. Football, true centre wing, broadcast side, tunnelled out by Coburn. The umpire said, you disposed of that incorrectly. Free kick to the ruse, it's going to be Lane. Across the halfback flank, broadcast side. He wants to open Crack up the hit. far wing, and Bill Hansen's got a paddock to run into. He takes a bounce. The former Ovens and Murray interleague captain goes inside forward 50 to our man, Mattress Wilson. Handballs over the top, wasn't his best. Hansen left the footy behind, free kick and a whistle. Push. It's a push, and it's going to go the way of the ruse. Billy's I think got it's it. Billy Hansen. Jesus who's had to run the about 150 metres there, Robbie, at full tilt to get the football. He'll be fatigued, Gus. He'll be absolutely knackered, but he's a fitness machine. Very good on the DJ decks as well, Robbie. Good on him. A dancer, I believe he calls himself. Does he? Yeah. There's a few good DJs rolling around the ovens of Murray. I was doing movie reviews. I don't know about dance movie reviews <laughs> yesterday, Gus. So Bill Hansen, his return year to the ruse, will kick from 40 metres out on a slight angle. Kick doesn't quite have the legs, or it might, in fact. He's got Goal it. umpire gives the two-finger salute. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, the field umpire's getting involved. There it is. The ruse draw level. 5-2 apiece on the CMB truck and bus scoreboard. At this same point in the first quarter, Monty, we thought it was going to be a blowout, but the Roos have responded with great gusto. Yeah, absolutely. Five in a row now for the Roos in this quarter. They've kicked the first three, so they've really got on top and through the middle of the ground where it started. Tommy Goodwin's really given a lift. He's gone to another level here in this quarter, and Jared Lane also, if that kicked to Bill Hanson, that opened the game up there to get it inside 50. Cora has just been able to get their better ball movement winners in the round of ball, as, uh, as Scotty just said. Then, as you said, Jared Lane's been great. He's had six disposals and kicked two goals as well. He's been outstanding. Cam Wilson's up to eight, and Damien Wilson's up to ten disposals for the game. Billy Hanson, Petters Aubrey player today, guys. No bull about that. Gee, that was a great effort. The scores are level. Would you believe it? Cora go inside forward 50 again through Jared Lane. Thumping kick. Handball release is going to happen. Jai Lane sits there. Can't get it. O'Dwyer out the back was okay. Got it to Sexton. He was beset upon. Ball won't spill out. Sexton sat over it. You'll have to be careful here. Umpire Peachy says, give it to me, fellas, and I'm going to ball it up. 40 out from the Coral Rubber Glen goal. Gus, they have kicked the last five goals, and they have drawn level. 5-2-32 apiece in front of over 2,000 people here at the John Ford Oval. Sponsored by Praise May, I reckon, Robbie, with the 2,000 oh, people. Oh, there's at least here, mate. Maybe three. 13 minutes gone on the Aubrey GJ Gardner Holmes time clock. The umpire's going to pay. Out He's going to pay out the full, full yep. So the Roos have got the football through Filipponi. 
who notched up 150 club games two weeks ago. Right foot kick inside forward 50 on the head of Robinson. Balls at ground level and through for a minor score. So for the first time today, the Roos hit the lead. 5-3-33 to Yarrawonga, 5-2-32. It's on the CMV truck and bus scoreboard. And Masters has the kick-in duties for Yarrawonga at the entrance end of the ground. And he's outside the square, Brad Freak, so give him another one. He's had one bounce. He runs his full measure, and it's a nice chipping kick. Oh, Filippone did well. He drove the knee into his opponent, which was Logan Morey. It was all fair in love and war, and the little he's man... He's come off second best, the, the little, little man. man. He's come off second best, all right. He's writhing in agony at the moment. Centre wing ball here. Joey Hanson flew high. There's a little bit of interference, though. The free kick's going to go the way of Tyson. Keep an eye on Filippone. Tyson kicks the ball inside forward 50. Williams for Yarrawonga marks. Still hasn't got up, boys. Filippone is still laying down with the trainers around him now. Right on the 50 metre arc is Lee Williams. Yarrawonga kicked the first five goals of the game. They stretch their lead at 29 points. Cole Rubberland lead it by one. Williams comes in. It's a shocker. He's kicked it out of bounds on the full. It's probably just his range there, Rob, because he looked to give that footy off. He was keen to give it off, was he? He didn't have many options there, and, and uh, Howard stood on the mark, gave him every opportunity, kicked it out of bounds on the full, so it's still 33 to 32. The Roos lead in an absolute ripper. The River Rumble, Gus. That it certainly is. Sunday footy on O&M Live doesn't get much better than this. Howard inboard finds it. Teammate, and they're going to stream through the centre of the ground with Jai Lane. Takes a bounce, moves to 60 metres from home. Oh. His handball was poor, but he's oh. going to regather it himself. Lane sucks it back in, oh, he's takes got up it. a tackle. What can't he do? <laughs> handball's in towards space. But Give it to a teammate. Iron's <laughs> born for the Pigeons. The football gets agonisingly close to Filippone here. We might be able to oh, get no. the action. The trainers <laughs> cop one in the back of the head and the kick down the front was a shocker from Jason Marks. <laughs> on the 40-wing stat sheet, give the Cora other Glen uh, trainer a disposal Mate. there, Freaky. He's on there. Mate, those trainers just could have been wandering down the main street they of Cora on less. a Sunday afternoon having a cup of tea. Couldn't give a stuff what was going on. Imagine if Big Tommy was coming through. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, we would have needed another three trainers to get those two trainers off, but... Well, Monty, you're going to get pretty close here to Hayden Filippone. We'll get, we'll it's check not in with way, you, boys. mate. Not in a good way, boys. Not in a good way being yeah. helped here, so I'll have a look in in a minute and let you know. Yeah, he's a, it was a very courageous effort he put up, and it was a just a, a typical Australian rules football clash that can happen. And um, is he holding his shoulder, yeah. Monty? No, uh, no, I think it's just uh, I think a bit of a head knock more. So they're just holding him up. By the way, they're holding that shoulder. So. All right. Well, boundary throw in came back in, and it's still a bit of a stalemate down there at the half forward flank. It's sitting 55 metres out from the core of gold. If you've left us for 20 or 30 minutes. Well, Yarrawonga kicked the first five goals. Cora have kicked the next five. They lead it by a point. Fobergill's handball was brilliant towards Wheeler. Intercepted. Nice work down there by Maxi Taylor. Handball was good to Fobergill. Over the top now. Here's a chance for Coburn. They've got a bit of room to move. Mead, long way down at centre wing. He'll chip and run. He'll go to Fraunfeld at Gus. And that's his target. Although Jack Shield did well. Knocked it to ground. Urquhart's a chance. Boundary line looms. And boundary line... Doesn't win. Urquhart keeps it in. Squeeze the handball to me. And he got wrapped up in a big crunching tackle by Cam Wilson. And the umpire said, holding the footy. Gee, it's a good game of footy. You sense the energy around the John Ford Oval starting to lift. It's a one-point lead to the Roos, 33-32 to 32 on the CMV truck and bus scoreboard as Corowa going towards centre-half forward but sitting in the hole nicely. He's wheel up. He takes a good mark for the Pigeons across centre-half back. Great to have your company on o &M Live. It's a one-point lead to the Roos over Yarrawonga. And what's the game called, Robbie? The River Rumble. The River. Rumble on the River. The Rumble on the River. Brad Freak on the 40-wing stat sheet. Cam Wilson's been the one for Kyra Boys. He's up to six disposals in this quarter. And Jared Lane's also had four. As we touched on, the inside 50s have gone completely the other way in this quarter. Ten to Kyra, but only three to Yarrawonga. They've been able to take full advantage of that by kicking the, the three goals in this term to get themselves back right and back in this game and take the lead. So Yarrawonga have got the footy with O'Dwyer, a true full back. He kicks out towards the halfback flank. And the Roos play this press. They press the whole ground really well and force their opposition to kick long down the line. And that's what Yarrawonga have to do. The kick wasn't the best, but Coburn has taken a good mark in front of the Murray Bridge. And the umpire's going to call him to play on. There is a player mattress. down here, Robbie. The mattress, mattress is down. 
As Coburn, left foot kick down the line's a good one. Fothergill marks. Just forward of true centre for Yarrawonga. Wants to play on quickly, gets it on the boot towards Williams. Good work from Howard, got a spoiler at the crucial moment and mops up the footy beautifully. Cody Howard emerges from defensive 50, links up with Wilson and here come the ruse. Yeah, Damien to Cameron. Cameron goes long, Mitchell read it well. Oh! Illy went hard at him, nothing in it. And Mitchell stood his ground and took a good grab. And Mitchell swings around on the left foot. Beautiful piercing kick, how good is that? Finds Coburn. Another left footer. He chips it over the top. They've got a little bit of run going here. The Pigeons might have been sharp. It was. Went long and Fothergill. Marks inside forward 50, but very tight angle. He's a fair way out. He'd have to kick it from almost 50. He's going to go back and have a bit of a look. Is Mattress up? Yeah, just quickly, Robbie. He's, he's holding his ankle, so I reckon Matty Wilson's done oh, right. an ankle. They, they tried to get him off the ground, get him this way, boys, but then they've actually taken him off the boundary on that side. I think they've told one of the other players to he come done. on, so yeah, it looks so like he's he might done be for the done. Day, boys. So, Father Girl runs around, plays on, kick on the way. Gee, it's not bad. It is just offline, and it's more, It's a mark. Or it's now the, they were all over, here we go. There'll be a boundary umpire, a gold umpire, and a field umpire involved. He says, I'm not sure what he says. There's a lot of nodding. It's going to be a mark. So there we go. So Lee Williams has marked a bee's diaphragm inside the, the line there. He likes these two, Robbie, the check side. He'll do the check side here, Gus. This, he goes short. Goodness me, that's almost arrogant. And it's been chopped out by Corarama Glenn. Here's a go. Handball back to Harry Wheeler. Oh. Wonderful smother there. Brilliant smother by Corarama Glenn. Trying to pick up the player. It was Cal Spencer. Cal it Spencer was Cal boys. Spencer who did that smother. Wheeler snap. It was heading for the middle of the goals. But, gee, Lee Williams, I'm not sure what he did there. And Joey Hansen's telling him just what he did do. And I don't think it was very complimentary. Gussie McLeod, 33 to 32. Cora Rubberglen lead Yarrawonga. 20 minutes gone, second quarter action. Whoa, she's heating up here a bit, Gus. It's all happening. And they've called stretcher. for the stretcher, boys. So, Matty Wilson, we absolutely love him on o and Live. He's one of the best characters in the competition. He's, he couldn't he's be further amazing. away, Gus, from the interchange. He, he's, he's on the banks of the Murray River. That's how far away from well, he's the interchange almost, he is. Oh, I actually thought he was in Wagania, Robbie, to <laughs> tell you the truth. Uh, Monty, we'll cross the new boundary sign for the Newmarket Hotel with Filipponi off the ground. Now, Mattress Wilson done for the day. That's a massive blow for the Roos. We still don't know what the latest on Filipponi is, but there's every chance he's done as well. Yeah, well, he's in the rooms, boys, and hasn't come back out yet, so it could be a little while before he does. He looked very groggy, and the, uh, the trainers were holding him up, basically, so not a good sign. And, yeah, Matty Wilson obviously stretched it and was taken off the other side, so cannot come back on. So, the, um, the... so yeah, they're two down, basically, and it's really going to hurt him with the way that Yarrawonga are able to, to rotate their midfield the way they do. And this is not a good signing for the Roos. Of course, it might be a blessing in disguise, actually, but the momentum was really starting to go Cora's way this quarter, and Yarrawonga now get a chance to regroup, uh, regroup and compose themselves. Uh, and this is where the ability of a playing coach will really come to fruition. Mark Wiley's going to get another chance to address the troops, Freaky. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just to touch on there, Gus, you say that momentum that Cora had in this quarter. Well, we've mentioned it a couple of times on the 40 wink stat sheet. Ten inside 50s to five uh, in favour of the, the Cora Rather Glen Roos at the moment. They've been well on top of them in this quarter being able to kick those three goals. To, to Haven't even scored this quarter yet, Yarrawonga. So they've been right on top. As we said, Cam Wilson's up to eight disposals and Jared Lane's had four in this term. So they're the ones getting it done. But this break in the play, hopefully Matty Wilson is alright. He's um, not using the stretcher, buddy. He decided he wants to be carried around. So oh, he'll, 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 much, he'll love that on the oh, way It's past. more the attention for the crowd. I think that's why he's making sure they carry him around. Uh, he might have so. changed his mind, has he? He stopped. Oh, mattress. He's probably got cramp. He's travelled 50 <laughs> metres around there. So, no, but in all seriousness, it doesn't look good. He is in a fair bit of pain. I think he is going to get down on the stretch now, boys. Around the ground, thanks to Mr. Stove's pool world. They've got it all for you. Mate Street and Norbury. The Gold Coast Suns, 35 to the Dockers, 16. And we're about to bounce the ball in what is going to be a pretty decent game of footy, I reckon. GWS and Leon Cameron's last game as the coach of the Giants, taking on... Carlton. Someone with sweaty palms in this box, I think, with the thought of that game on Gus. I'm not expecting a victory, <laughs> lads. <laughs> and now Mattress, an update on Mattress Wilson. He's jumped on the uh, stretcher. And he's getting carted off. He's like a like a king pharaoh, isn't he, the way he's getting strutted out there. But the poor fella done the ankle and he's going to have to come off. He's one of those players that football clubs can't function without. <laughs> he's constantly in and out of the ones. He doesn't care where he plays his footy. He just ble bleeds for this footy club and 
From all reports, Monty, in your times here at the Roos, he really is one of the heart and souls and, and the character of this footy club. I think those sort of guys are usually judged on how good they go at functions, Gussie, and he's definitely one of the best at them, that's for sure. Don't yeah. worry, I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah, so no, but he is a great guy, and, and he's actually quite a useful footballer. When he gets the ball in his hand, he's very damaging. He, he's one of the most skillful players. He just probably His dedication, which he'll probably be first put his hand up and say, has probably been what's let him down, and that's probably why he's been the guy that's in and out, but he is definitely someone this team loves to get around, and I'm sure they'll be around him at halftime when they get into the rooms. So we've elapsed about three extra minutes here. The stretcher was called at the 21 minute mark. It now ticks to about 24 and 10 seconds. If you just join the OM live broadcast, Matt Wilson being taken off the ground for the ruse with an ankle injury. Hayden Filipponi's in the sheds with what we believe to be concussion. And the CMV truck and bus scoreboard reads Korowa 5 3 to Yarrawonga 5-2-32. You'd imagine Robbie with five goals in this quarter. This will potentially be a 32 to 33 sort of minute uh, second quarter, thanks to Wodonga Pumps and Mowers. Yeah, three goals kicked in the quarter, uh, all to Cora Rutherland. So Cora Rutherland have actually kicked the last five. So we're going to get back into it, and we're going to have a boundary throw in right in front of us here. Gee, it's a good throw in too. Great throw. Tommy Good won the tap. Intercepted by Willie Wheeler, got a really good handball to Mark Wiley. Wiley held on to the footy, got a handball to Coburn. Coburn got it back, intercepted though by Jared Lane. Quick hands to Cameron Wilson for Cora Rutherland. Sent it to his brother. He's going to need a bit of cover. Jai Lane did okay. And Cam Wilson, he grabbed it on the boundary line. Mark Wiley tucked him straight away. And he just nudged him over the boundary line for a boundary throw in. Only about five metres from Scott Montgomery, who's sitting on a chair. Yeah, and uh, Maxie Taylor's coming off of a shoulder injury here too, boys. So yes, that's another one done. Not good news for Kyrowa. Coburn emerges with the footy from the contest. Handball's over the top. Hanson, Joe, good contest. Back to Coburn, who goes inside, forward 50. Williams brought it front and centre. Meade tries to run onto it, but Williams says, thank you, mother, for the rabbits. Four goals to Big Leroy. He brought the football to ground level, crumbed it himself and kicked his fourth. And that's a real momentum swinger here at the John Ford Park in Kyrowa. 6-2, the Pigeons move to and they regain the lead. Scott Montgomery for the Newey. Yeah, it's something that Yarra really needed, the first goal for the quarter. It just sort of breaks the momentum. That, that stretcher probably did happen, happen to do already for Cairo, but that goal just really now shifts it back in, in Yarrawonga's favour. Braden Coburn's been up in one for Yarrawonga that's got busy in this quarter, boys. He's up to nine disposals, and Nick Fothergill picked up where he left off in the first quarter as well. He's up to seven in this quarter, which takes him to 19 for the game. So fourth goal to Lee Williams and Yarrawonga's first goal since the 22-minute mark of the first quarter. So it was almost a bit over a quarter of football since their goal. But that goal did get them back in front. So the trend of the game would suggest they kick the next four. And then Cora kicked the next four, Gus. That would make it exciting. Would Yarra kick the next four after that? You never know, Gus. <laughs> uh, good tap down there by Tyson. And it can't make a clearance yet. Hey Mont, I had a bit of a stab in the dark at the crowd. You've been around a bit. I went with two. Gus reckons I've put a bit of mayo on it. What do you reckon? I reckon there's a lot of mayo on that one. No, I reckon there's probably a thousand to 1500 here, Robbie. You'd be around that range, I reckon. Yeah, you can I'll all tell get you what. stuffed. I'll tell you what, it's <laughs> good a grab it's taken a... by young uh, Max Cameron Barrett there and he played on. His target was Robinson and it misses him. Kick off the ground was clever. Oh, it's, a and it's a point. Oh. Oh. Gee whiz. Trying to pick up who kicked that off the ground. I'm not sure it was Robinson or was it Ma Darcy Melchin? It was Darcy Melchin, yeah. Cutting Darcy across. Melchin with the point. So the four point lead to Yarrawonga. Here's Gus McLeod as Mitchell marks at half back for Yarrawonga. He's been impressive for the Yarrawonga Pigeons as he takes a couple of bounces across the broadcast wing of the John Ford Park in Corowa. Kicks down the line. Wilson had the front spot in front of Williams. Brought it to ground level. Hatton taking in a big crunching tackle. Will ball the footy up on the edge of the centre square. 33, the Roos plays Yarrawonga 38 on the CMV truck and bus scoreboard. And this quarter's probably got at least another seven or eight minutes to go. Bradkey tapped it down in towards space and Wilson gets a clearing kick. It was Cam up towards the centre half forward position. Mitchell gets amongst it for Yarrawonga. O'Dwyer held up an incorrect disposal. The umpires found a free kick. And here come the Roos inside 50 by a dance on. This is a beautiful kick. And taking a mark in the pocket is Marks. He'll go back and have a set shot. 
25 metres out on a 45 degree angle. Cam Wilson's the one, boys. He's up to 11 disposals in this last second quarter. He's been everywhere for the ruse, in and under, on the outside. He's been the one that's really taken it on and get the game back on their terms. And Jared Lane as well, he's had five disposals, he's been really, really good and kicked a goal as well for the ruse. Dan Saunders and uh, his first year for the ruse after jumping ship from the Magpies. And I reckon the umpires forgot to uh, stop the clock, I reckon. So after the siren, Jason Marks kicks on goal. It's bending, it's bending, and it's a goal. So the Roos regain the lead going into quarter time by a sole point. 6-3, 39 to Yarrawonga, 6-2, 38. A cracking contest of football here on A&M Live, and we're shaping up for a big second half, boys. Yeah, gee, I'll tell you what, if he could uh, bowl in swing like that, that was incredible. <laughs> it was like Glenn McGrath at his best that did come back, but uh, a beautifully highly skilled player, Jason Marks, and he, he nailed that. So the Roos to take up that two-point lead, and I'll tell you what, after they gave up the first five goals, you wouldn't have given them a chance of that. It's a very entertaining game. Four goals to one that quarter. The Roos lead it by two, Gussie. The rumble on the river is absolutely about to bubble over, I reckon. She is red hot here. I like that one. That's here to stay. The rumble on the river between the Roos and the Pigeons is live, free and exclusive to O&M Live. Coming up on the other side of the break, it's the halftime show live from the John Ford Oval in Corowa. A one-point lead or a two-point lead to the Roos at the main break. You're listening to O&M Live, and on O&M Live, you won't miss a thing. Watching the game at home is good, but watching the game on the big screen with all your mates, all the atmosphere and the great food and beer is pretty hard to beat. And it's all here at the locker room at the SSNA. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor, able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. Did someone say KFC? I don't care! Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where there's industry qualified trainers. Go where students come first. Go for the community. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it with Go TAFE. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. <laughs> Rewrite the rules. Carlton Zero. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Go to create your future. Go for free support services. Go to get in-demand skills. Go and follow your own path. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it. With Go TAFE. Hi, I'm Kylie King. 
I first fell in love with this region as the Prime News sports presenter. Sometimes this feels like my second home. I love our historic towns and vibrant cities, our passion for sport and, of course, the people who make it special. And now I get to share what's important in our region with Kev Poulton. So join us, Kylie and Kev, for breakfast, weekday mornings from 6 on 2AY and 3NE. Somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. To ONN Live on 2AY. Half time here at the John Ford Oval in a, in a real a game full of momentum swings uh, on the half time show here for Elders Rural Supplies. Uh, we're here and the final the score at half time is Kyra Rutherglen 40, Yarrawonga 38. Yarrawonga got off to a fast start. Scotty Montgomery, who's on half time with me, uh, kicking the first five goals, but then Kyra Rutherglen be able to pull it right back, kicking the next five and taking a two point lead into half time. Yeah, absolutely. It was a momentum swinging game, hasn't it, so far? Obviously, the first five of the first quarter went to Yarra and then the next two with that quarter went to Cora and then Cora kicked the first throw of that quarter. Looked like they really had all the momentum and obviously we had the stretcher for Matt Wilson who had already gone off the ground on the other side of the ground and they decided to run the stretcher over to him so stopped the game um, which is probably smart on their behalf but it probably killed the momentum and then Yarra were able to kick that goal and probably just broke the momentum but then obviously Jason Marks right on the halftime siren. Probably a goal they needed just to mm. go in in front in half time and now the confidence will be up but obviously a couple of injuries to the Cora boys might change the rotations a little bit and make it hard coming into that last Quarter. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll see how they go for the, the game runs out. Obviously, it's going to really test their fitness base that the, the Roos have today with, as you say, only down to looks like one rotation for the rest of the game. Obviously, full of momentum swings as we touched on. Yarra Wonga in that first quarter, they, they're very deliberate in the, their pr- approach to get the ball around the ground, pulling, kicking just across their half-back line, and then obviously once they get into a bit of space, using their leg speed and being able to get over the top and get into, into the forward 50 and get it into Lee Williams, who's, had, who's kicked four goals and also had five. Corra in that second quarter, right behind Tom Goodwin, it must be said, who just in the first, especially in the first half of that second quarter, really, really came in. I got a bit of a rev up at quarter time because the way he came out of that break, he was inspirational nearly in the in the middle of the ground. Just as soon as the ball hit the deck, he was like another rover, which is something Tommy Goodwin's not probably known for. He's more his his, grand, his um, aerial stuff is what he's known for, but he was just getting in and under, getting the hands dirty, and, and really leading the way for their their midfielders like the Wilson boys and Jared Lane, who who really started to get some momentum in that middle part of that second quarter. Yeah, if we have a look at the Optus quarters best for that second quarter, as you rightfully touched on there, Tommy Goodwin for mine was the best player, nearly on the on the ground in that second quarter, especially. Early in that quarter. Cam Wilson as well was outstanding. He was all over the ground having 11 disposals along the way. And Jared Lane as well. I thought he's, for mine, Scotty, he's probably one of the most versatile players in the competition. Him and Tom Johnson from Wodonga, you can sort of play them anywhere, get in and plug a hole and they can do a role for you. Uh, for the Yarrawonga side of things, I thought Mark Wally, the coach, was really great. He, he seemed to play a little bit more behind the ball that quarter, Scotty, just to sort of control think, the tempo yeah, I think a little the bit. the momentum started to swing the other way. That's when he sort of just went behind the footy as a midfielder and um, just tried to, to quell that, which they were able to do to the end of the quarter, but yeah, he, he, this week it's really good to see that he's gone through the middle again a bit more than what he has been. He, he's been playing nearly solely forward the first three or four games, so it's good to see him go through the middle. And still, he's still got it. He's still a class player, and you can see why he's been on the AFL list. Yeah, absolutely. With Lee Williams coming to the side, they've got that flexibility with Wiley as well. They can play him anywhere they want. And obviously, I thought Braden Coburn in that in that second quarter as well was was really really strong, having eight disposals. If we have a look at the forty wing stat sheet uh, in that second quarter, as we touched on, Cam Wilson had eleven disposals for the Ruse which takes him to 16 for the game. Jared Lane only had the five, but he felt like every time he touched the ball, he did something with it and was very influential. With well, him. I think he kicked a goal with one of those five, and the other one he set up a goal, which yeah. was uh, the one he kicked to Bill Hanson that uh, Bill yeah. was kicking the goal with. So, yeah. yeah, very, very dangerous when he gets the foot in his hands, Jared. Yeah, absolutely. Damo Wilson up to 11 disposals in the... Uh, sorry, up to 12 disposals in that first half, having nine in the first, a little bit quieter in the second. Expect a big second half from him as well. If we turn our attention, look at the Yarrawonga side of things. Nick Fothergill's been the one. He's had, up to, he's had 18 disposals 
disposals in that first half. He's, in the first quarter, he was a little bit more noticeable. In the second quarter, he was still good around the ground, but not as damaging his disposals were compared to the first quarter. Braden Coburn's been working his way into the game, as we touched on. He's up to 14 for the game. And Lee Masters and Willie Wheeler have both had 10 as well. If we have a look at the team stats, Scotty, it, it, it just shows the momentum swings that we've had in the game. If we look at the first quarter, particularly in the inside 50s, all the other team stats are relatively even. If we look at centre clearances, 5 to Korowa, 4 to Yarrawonga. Uh, marks inside 50, 6 to Korowa, 8 to... Yarrawonga, but it's the inside 50s now which are level but if we look at the first quarter, only 7 for Korowa to 13 for Yarrawonga but in the second quarter, roles were reversed 11 inside 50s for Korowa in that second quarter to 6 for Yarrawonga so it just shows the momentum swings and just being able to capitalise when you have that momentum swing and getting yourself in front of the game Yeah, absolutely, and I think both coaches at different times were able to put, I think Jai Lane went behind the footy in that first quarter to try and, try and nullify the use they were able to get inside there, and then obviously in that quarter as we spoke about, Mark Wiley went behind the footy for a little bit just to try and yeah nullify the inside 50s which I think they're able to do both times if we have a look at the goal kickers for the game so far Lee Williams is up to four for Yarrawonga and singles to Tim Lawrence and Willie Wheeler that's probably one thing you could touch on for, for Yarrawonga is Scotty they, are they a little bit too predictable going to Lee Williams all the, all the time yeah well, I had a good look at it last week I thought last week they probably bombed a bit more to Williams or Symes whereas this week they've probably hit him on a lead a little bit more but someone like Bailey Frumfeld is probably mm. he's probably the one that's going to suffer from this Lee Williams coming mm. in now um, he probably is not getting used as much and he's probably going over his head and he, he's that half forward role now instead of being that sort of mid-size deeper forward which is something that I think he's really dangerous at so maybe they could get him deeper and he can be the guy that comes in behind Williams and still get used quite a bit because he's quite dangerous and crafty around goals. And if we have a look at the Corowa side of things for the goal kickers, two to Keelan Bradley, two to Jared Lane and singles to Jason Marks and one to Bill Hansen. You're listening to the Halftime Show brought to Elders Rural. Uh, the score here at the John Ford Oval if you've just tuned in is Corowa rather than leading by two points uh, 40 to 38 uh, at halftime here. Now if we look forward to the, the second second half here, Scotty. Obviously, very even game, and Cora will look like they're going to be down a couple of rotations, but, but how does either side grab that momentum and really run with it and not let the other side back into it? Well, I think for Cora, it's about when they've got the footy go. I think we, fair, we saw in that second quarter that when they went and got it through the middle of the ground and linked up with handball or short kicking, they were able to break the lines open of the Yarrawonga defence, and were able to get it nice and deep and have shots on goal. Whereas for Yarrawonga, they've just got to try and maintain the possession a bit more. We saw in the first quarter, they were happy to kick it backwards, chip around, in the back half and then once they broke that centre centre line of the ground they really went strong and deep and long into the forward line whereas in that second quarter they probably were going a bit too early it was more from half back they were trying to kick it long to a lead up where you know that extra 30 40 metres it makes all the difference all of a sudden it goes from a, a potential turnover going back inside 50 to a deep entry which is there for a shot on goal if it, even if it comes to ground your small should be there and having a shot on goal but when you're a bit, that, a bit further out and hitting that 60 metre mark 60 out from goal it's a really dangerous spot so they need to get it nice and long and deep to, to Williams and from Felder and guys of that signed to uh, make sure they're having shots on goal every time they go inside 50. Yeah, and if you're just tuning in as well, but earlier in the day we had uh, the netball game between the Ray White Rule update between Korora and Yarrawonga, obviously top of the table clash, and Korora Rutherglen were able to get uh, the victory there seven by seven goals, 56 to 49. Uh, and that, that is the halftime show brought to you by uh, Elders Rural, obviously going to be a cracking second half, and you catch all the action live after the ad break, and all the, well, no one am live, you won't Miss a thing. AT Jones. Watching the game at home is good, but watching the game on the big screen with all your mates, all the atmosphere, and the great food and beer is pretty hard to beat. And it's all here at the locker room at the SSNA. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor, able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? 
Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where there's industry qualified trainers. Go where students come first. Go for the community. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it with GoTafe. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. Rewrite the rules. Carlton Zero. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Go to create your future. Go for free support services. Go to get in-demand skills. Go and follow your own path. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it. With Go TAFE. Hi, I'm Kylie King. I first fell in love with this region as the Prime News sports presenter. Sometimes this feels like my second home. I love our historic towns and vibrant cities, our passion for sport and, of course, the people who make it special. And now I get to share what's important in our region with Kev Poulton. So join us, Kylie and Kev, for breakfast, weekday mornings from 6 on 2AY and 3NE. Somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad, and tartare sauce from just eighteen dollars. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. Welcome back to the John Ford Oval in Corowa, home of the Corowa Rather Glen Roos. Great to have your company on fourteen ninety four two A Y Sunday Footy. And the Roos currently hold a two-point lead over Yarrawonga, 40-38 to 38 on the Peter Bowen home scoreboard. Uh, Brad Freak for 40 wings. Who are the leading stats getters as we head into the third quarter? Yeah, in the first half there, Nick Fothergill was the leading disposal getter on the 40 wing stat sheet. He had 18 disposals and uh, Cam Wilson for Cora was the second highest. He had 16 with Braden Coburn having 14 as well. So plenty of the uh, prime ball winners for either side getting around the ball as well in that first half. Hey, boys, Yarong out on the ground doing a warm-up, but uh, Monty down there on the boundary side uh, for the Newmarket Hotel. No sign of the Coral Rubble getting guys yet. In fact, they mightn't have enough players to get out there. Yeah, well, the that's it. I think <laughs> <for that second laughs> they've just got a bit of uh, medical work to make sure no one's going to get injured for the second uh, second half. But uh, I think Yarong were pretty keen to get back out here because they did probably break a little bit of momentum going into half time. so they were probably happy to get out here as quick as they could because they did beat the umpires out by quite a few minutes. And of course, those injuries we were speaking about. Gus, he was a uh, Hayden Filipponi was a uh, in a heavy clash. Uh, he looks like he, it looks like a concussion, I would say. Oh no, we're, oh. we're hearing a, a potential punctured lung. Robbie's coughing oh, okay. up, yeah, coughing blood. up blood, boys. Yeah, so, all right. So that's so a, we're, we're thinking about him. That's that's shocking. Uh, Mattress Wilson, he went down on the far side of the ground with a leg injury. So um, we'll, we'll find him all. That. And then Maxi Taylor came to the interchange bench holding his shoulder. So it's, uh, yeah, at this stage we think they would be down to one rotation off the interchange, which is, you know, Mont, you'd think it's going to have to play a big part in what unfolds here in the second half. Absolutely, especially for the midfield, because that's probably where they're going to have to use that rotation, but um, obviously Yarrawonga have three four blokes still on the bench, so they're... Uh 
their rotations are going to be really high. Good. If you've just joined, if you've missed the first half, a bit of the tale of the tape was that Yarrawonga came out, they kicked the first five goals of the game. Lee Williams kicked three of those, and they stretched their margin out to, well, it was 29 points. And then Cora Rutherland came back and kicked the next five goals. In fact, they hit the lead uh, late again, and then Yarrawonga got it back with Williams, got his fourth goal. And then after the siren, a set shot by Jason Marks, Brad Freak, put the ruse back in front by two points, 40 to 38. Yeah, it certainly did. Full of momentum swings in that first half. If we go around the grounds for Mr. Stobes' pool world in the AFL that's going on at the moment, we've got a bit of an upset going on between the Gold Coast and the Fremantle Dockers. Gold Coast there up by uh, 26 points at the moment, 43 to 17 late in the third quarter there. And your Blues, Robbie, kicked the first two goals in that oh. game. Blow the siren. Up. Blow the siren. She's uh, all over. Reckon, reckon the Checkers... Blues Carlton remix will be on when we get home from Molzo. <laughs> oh, you love that, don't you? Yeah, I, don't, I don't love it. You, you, you do. You are, you are, I call it oh, like the dancing Collingwood to one. it. I like the Collingwood one, not the, the Carlton the, one. The Richmond one's the very good one when they won the yeah. premiership, the, the remix version of yeah. that. Maybe uh, DJ Bill Hansen can spin a couple of, uh, <laughs> couple of Carlton now, tunes. Now, he's stuck in the room, so he you won't be able to spin any yet. tunes, boys. Don't be surprised to see my old mate Glenn Peachy, the field up by there. He could throw the ball in the air here and start play. Are you allowed to do that in senior You can do it. You are allowed to do it. Yep. Now, I, I haven't seen any of the r &M officials uh, in the last sort of 20 minutes or so, but I don't know if we dish out fines in the ovens of Murray as the Roos make their way onto the ground now. But Maxi Taylor's come back out, boys. He's got that shoulder strapped, so he's back out here. He's coming straight to the bench, but I think he may be taking his spot again in the second half. Germo notorious for holding the players in for very long addresses. Oh, Dunny. Yeah. He'd make a good doctor, Germo. <laughs> Never on time. Yeah. Well, they, well. Doctors don't have to charge by the minute to hit you hard in the hip pocket. And, uh, yeah, no, Jermo. Geez, you wouldn't like him doing a quote for you, would you? Why is that? Well, the amount of time he spends there, you know, sort of. <laughs> 6 4 40, the Corrupt Rutherford Glen Roos, the Yarrawonga yeah. Pigeons, 6 2 38. The Rumble on the River, Big Mac. We're about to get underway in the third quarter. Thanks to Agboss. Umpire holds the Sharon aloft and here's Robbie McKinlay for McRae Motors on OM Live. Thanks, Gussie. There's a cracker. It's been, if the second half can match the first half, we're in for a beauty. Jared Lane, middle of a hand on the ball, tapped it cleverly. Tommy Goodwin, he ta tackled miss. Chance here for Willie Wheeler. Kicks the ball inside, forward 50 for Yarrawonga to half foot. Mead takes a good grab on the second bite. Jackson Mead in number 22. And he'll go back and have a shot. He's directly in front, and he's got a good leg on him, this lad, too. He's not a bad set of jukes either. And he's been a bit of an underrated player for the Pigeons this year. Comes in now, very deliberate approach. Kicks from exactly 48 metres yeah. with a shocker. Spin wasn't good and Howard took a good mark. Last line of defence, Gus. And he did a good job, Howard. Williams has kicked four goals, but hasn't been a bad battle. No, Howard's probably, beside that first 10 minutes in the first quarter where Williams got three... He's probably starting to become out on top here as he kicks long down the line, but Yarrawonga have numbers. Irons Pawn inside forward 50. Good work at the back of the pack from Shield. Ball at ground level. Wilson links up nicely with Hanson and kicks out to the Murray River side of the ground and a foot race with Melksham and Bruce. Bruce wins that one, emerges with the footy and kicks up towards the half forward flank. So a bit of congestion as Joe Hanson... Tackles his opponent across the boundary line for a boundary throw in 60 metres out from Yarrawonga's goal. Score hasn't changed at half time. 6 4 40 to Yarrawonga. 6 2 38 on OM Live. Fast side of the ground. So slightly into attack for Yarrawonga. Kicking to the northern end of the ground. Wheeler tackled. Couldn't prevent a handle. Tommy Gooden got himself over the footy. And it's going to be very hard to extract it from there. Tommy might have got himself a free kick, has he? He has. He. He took a, a very exaggerated leap forward and the big fellas picked himself up. God, he reminds me of Mick Nolan, a bloke who played in the ruck for uh, North Melbourne. The galloping gasometer. Yeah, the old man would have probably yeah, played yeah, with him. Yeah, I think Mont. he might have for a little bit. He reminds me so much. It's a good kick from the gasometer and it's Mitchell, who's been as good as anyone on the ground today, Caleb Mitchell. The young left footer coming to the side last week, Gussie, and played a beauty, and he's continuing his good form now as he drives it down the half-forward line. He looks a player, a real emerging talent. 
of the Yarrawonga Pigeons. The footy trickles out of bounds for a boundary throw in. We'll cross boundary side. Scott Montgomery for the New Market Hotel. What's the latest from the Ruse bench? Yeah, I've just got a little work. Watching the game. Um, the runner here, he's giving me a bit of an update. So Maxi Taylor's had the shoulder strapped and he's told Peter Germany he'll be right to come out if he needs to. Um, Matt Wilson's obviously still a lower leg injury, most likely just ankle, but nothing may too major. And obviously Hayden Filipponi, yeah, he's coughing up blood. So something lung related, I think, at the moment. So the Pigeons get it inside forward 50 and towards the top of the goal square. Ball at ground level. Here's a chance for Mead. Kicks on goal. It's Lawrence, I should say. And he's kicked it. A point. He's kicked the point. Timmy Lawrence went the check side. Robbie, it's not a, his best. It's a well-celebrated point, boys. Yeah, it was coming back, coming back. And he was a bit unlucky. He was, uh, it was a little bit high. It was very hard to judge over the top of that right-hand goal post. But he's... Uh, and we might have another injury too. We just keep an eye on Joe Hanson. Hansen, yeah, he looks like he's uh, done an ankle also, just hobbling around. So hopefully nothing too major. Hatton played on from fullback and he kicked it towards Tom Goodwin. Couldn't mark it. Oh, Cam Wilson came through. He got held up and he'll be tackled. And Montes for the uh, Newmarket Hotel. Joey Hanson, what can you see? That talk yeah, the thumbs up just come from the runner there. So I think he'll be right. He's just trying to get that ankle moving a bit. He's just holding the ankle, but he'll be right. Goodwin did well there, didn't get the secondary tap, and once again, we're going to have another ball up. We'll see if you can get a clearance here, Gussie. Brad Freak first, though, for 40. Uh, Winks, what do you found early days, third term? Yeah, three inside 50s early to Yarrawonga. One, probably something to keep an eye on. We saw in the first two quarters, real momentum swings in those inside 50s. Wheel up over the top to Coburn for the Pigeons. Good tackle from Lane. Umpire said nothing in it. Here's a go for Sexton. 50 from home, chips into the pocket to Leroy Williams. 30 metres out on a pretty tight angle. Don't kick this one off. Go back and drill it yourself. Yeah, he thought about Thovergirl, and then I think he had a flashback to what he did in the second quarter when he got too um, generous. And, and from all reports, Robbie, the under-19s and under-18s behind the goals oh, for the Roos were brutal. giving him a bath. <laughs> Lee Williams, 40 metres out on a tight angle to the entrance end of the John Ford Oval. Dead-eye dick. Straight over the goal umpire, Satin, he's kicked five. And Farsley becoming one of the more prenominous full forwards in the competition. A superb kick from Leroy, and he's kicked five. Yarrawonga regained the lead. Brad Freak for 40 winks. Yeah, five goals in two games in a row now, guys. Obviously, 5-4 last week. He's kicked five again today. He's also taken seven marks inside that forward 50 for Yarrawonga. He's been really potent. As you said, Cody Howard, who's been on him for outside of that first 10 minutes, I thought he's done a really good job. But just sometimes a few turnovers a bit up the ground, probably a bit harder for him to get on top of him, and just gives Lee Williams a bit more space to run into. Gus, you're educated a lot higher than me. Prenonymous. What does that mean? Uh, Robbie, that's a word that I just made up there, uh, having stuffed up two words I was trying to put together. So that one will make the highlights real next week. Cam Wilson got a good handball out. It went in the way of Jai Lane, who couldn't get hold of the footy. And then Damien Wilson was beset upon by Harry Wheeler. And it will be a ball up and a bit of brotherly love there. Cam picks up Damien. I was hoping I was going to get away with that one, Robbie. <laughs> yeah, I was just sweating on that one. So I'm sure your dad would be very disappointed with the amount of money spent on your education. <laughs> Didn't you go, right. speaking of education, you went to school with Peaches, didn't you? Well, I did. I'll, I'll tell you a story about Peaches. That Tommy Goodwin's got it. Oh, Tommy, oh. he ran into a couple. He brushed them off. Jai Lane, hurry kick, high, inside forward 50. Jared Lane's there, out the back. Fist comes to the ground. Mitchell, good handball release now to Masters. And he goes on the left foot. Oh, that was a little bit late there from Saunders. Just got to be careful there, young fella. Now, Unspawn has it. Kicks it down the line, centre wing. Symes is there. Oh, Symes crashed into his teammate. He knocked Logan Mori. I think it was Logan Mori over. Doesn't matter who it was. He gave him a bloody corky anyway. He's going to come off the boundary. It went inside to Mitchell. Mitchell got it back to Einspawn. Einspawn got it back to Masters. Masters off the left foot. Gus kicks it to Cuppins, who marks. And there's a couple of players going down injured. We'll get this Monty soon. And here goes Mitchell. Left foot kick. Hugs the boundary line to a contest. And taking the mark uncontested with Spencer. We'll cross boundary side to Mont. It's Fronfelder who's come off the ground. Yeah, it looks like he's caught one in their guts there, boys. So he's just struggling to get the air in. But I think he'll be right. Yeah, Cal he's trying to suck him in now. Spencer goes long down the line to a contest. Will Sexton got a bit of work to do against oh. Robinson. Got slung to the ground. The umpire said play on. Here's a go for Wheeler. He's kick hugs the boundary line. And Coburn takes a mark with a kick. that went about six metres. <laughs> At best.
at best, I reckon I might have been generous there. A bit like Robbie's crowd estimate in the, uh, oh. the first quarter. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to Stuart Lingham about this. Here goes the Piawonga Pigeons out towards true centre wing. The kick from uh, Wiley was okay. Tractor Symes left it at ground level. Here comes Wilson. Damien met nicely by... Oh, goodness. Big Please. crunching tackle on there. From oh. Wiley. Yeah, is it? Off. Nothing in it. Play on. Here's a go and, for Ryan Paul. It was actually a free kick paid for descent there, boys, from Billy Anthony for not getting that free kick. Inside forward 50, Lee Williams once again. Brute strength, three on one, 50, and 50. it's a 50. I think it's another descent one too, boys. Yep. Peachy's on to that one. Was there any descent given the way of Peachy in high school, <laughs> Robbie, the Holbrook Tech? No, no, no he went to um, Xavier. He went to Xavier. It was called Aquinas College in those days, Gus, Peachy and I. How many times? Did I was in his class for one. You, you called this first, so. Well, it's a goal. There's that one for Lee Williams. He's kicked six. Yarrawonga moved to 51. Kiowa 40 on the Peter Bowen home scoreboard. And Robbie, what I'm trying to get to here is that you and Peaches, the umpire, centre umpire today for the Ovens and Murray Clash, you went to high school together. He got, uh, in his school certificate, he got 90, which is a pretty good score, isn't it? Only yeah, trouble is good. it took him three years to accumulate it. So we've got 33 <laughs> years in a row. You use Poor that one in your, your interview with my old man, I reckon, Robbie. You just keep regurgitating it. Mate, if, it if it works, mate, you give them what they want. They Billy, love it. Billy Brownless on, a, on another network has been absolutely crucified for doing that. Yep. And he comes out and he said, well, you Muppets have been paying me for 20 years to do it. So exactly. keep doing it. Here's Robbie McKinlay. You're listening to O&M Live. And a lovely bloke, Peach, too. And he'll, he'll appreciate that bit of humour. Well, he's used to it now. You've dropped it 50 times on him. <laughs> and it's going to be balled up again. So he's just having a spell at half forward now. We've balled up in the middle of the ground. Cherry out two to Travis Cartwright, who's on the uh, camera today. And ah! always promised to try to entertain with Travis Best when in he's business. in the house. He's an absolute gun. Good Carlton man as well. Now midfield here, Harry Wheeler. He was spun around and he's gone. Play on his advantage. It does fall that way of Barrett. Barrett straightens up now. The kick's going to be good. Oh, it is good. Jared Lane marks a low chest mark. 45 metres out direct in front. Distance will not be an issue. Well, he's been prolific, Robbie, in his goal kicking to date. He's kicked two majors today, and he's one of the more beautiful left footers in the competition. He really is a pleasure to watch. And Good cheaper. versatile all-round sports mm. person. The Roos need this, Robbie. Jared Lane, 48 metres out. Kick on the way. Distance is there. Accuracy, you betcha. Jared Lane gets his third. The Roos get their reply, and they trail now by five. 7-4-46, Yarrawonga 8-3-51, that's on the Peter Bowen home scoreboard and on the Aubrey GJ Gardner home time clock, Gus, we have gone about 10 minutes into the third term. Jared Lane only up to 11 disposals in his game, boys, but with those three goals, I just, I just feel like every time he gets the ball, something good happens for Coro. His brother, Jai, in this quarter is up to four disposals, and Cam Wilson's up to three, and if we have a look at the Yarrawonga side of things, Willie Willis had four to start in this quarter as well. Five-point ball game on o &M Live, third quarter action thanks to Ag Boss. Jai Lane really has lifted Gussie, there's no doubt about that. That he certainly has, so is this bloke, Symes, takes it out of the ruck, handballs to Fothergill, links up with Wheel Up. And Harry kicks down the line. Hatton's there for the pigeon, for the the ruse, I should say. At ground level, hands and knees. Got to get the football out. He does. Well. Melksham's amongst it. Handballs to Bill Hanson. Lowers his eyes. They come in board and they're playing Whoa. fast, attacking footy. But it's at the risk of losing it. Here's a go for Masters. Shimmies and shakes. Wants to find the right boot to go inside forward 50. Oh. Has he paid the mark? He has indeed. He has paid the mark, Robbie. It looks like Urquhart, I think. Might be Geordie Urquhart. I reckon it is. It is Geordie Urquhart. And he'll go back and have a set shot. She's great kick. 40 metres out. Pretty much directly in front. And Yarrawonga. Gee, they work really hard in defence there, Robbie. And it, and it come off. Yeah, just, just yeah, that missed handball yep. for Damien Wilson, wasn't it? Just overshot it a little bit, and that's what turned it over and put it on the pump. So Urquhart, for the quick response for Yarrawonga, he's pushed it across the face to the right-hand side for a minor score. 8 4 52, Yarrawonga, and they lead Coro up 7 4 46. And there's been a move of the magnets, Robbie. Tommy Goodwin, bear in the square, full forward. <laughs> I like it. He'll be looking forward to that. Now the kick in is a thumping one indeed. It goes to that far side of the ground between half back and wing. And umpire Glenn Peachy will ball it up. Out there in front of a, a crowd I reckon is w well around the 2,000 mark. 
It's a bloody good crowd. River, regardless the River Rumble, it. mate. It's a cracking crowd, Gussie. Yeah. Symes won the tap, overrun by Cuppins. Mopped up there by Cam Wilson. Kicks it across the ground. It's a little bit dangerous, but Saunders did okay. He created a bit of a pathway there for a teammate. Got it back to Jared Lane. Wheels around on the left. Kick's going to be good. Melchin was the target. Ryan Bruce is there. Bruce gets a handball release to Masters. Melchin intercepted. Quick answer. Robinson was excellent. Robinson kicks. Oh, Mark's dropped what he maybe should have taken. Good work by Sexton. Sexton kept the ball rolling forward. Did it again. Melchin was there. Quick handball. Waited for Marks. Got it back to Melchin. Him. Left foot kick is a beauty. Found Jared Lane. Too far out the score lane. He's got big Tommy all alone. Tommy Goodwin at the footy. Punch from behind was Tommy. Masters will mop up here, Gus, and they'll get out of trouble, the Pigeons, and a beautiful kick to Willie Wheeler. Great call, Robbie McKinlay for McRae Motors on OM Live as Wheeler plays on down the Murray River side of the ground. Luke Williams, big strong mark, true centre wing. Murray River side of the ground. When Williams goes up towards the, the half-forward flanks in the wing, it doesn't leave many options for them to go long down the line too. So he waits and punts it as oh. far as he can. Oh. Flying high was Lawrence. Left it behind. Ball at ground level. Urquhart wrapped up in a big tackle by Spencer. The umpire said it's a free kick. It's going to go the way of the Pigeons. And he's down too, boys. Spencer. It's taking a little while to get up. He's holding his guts, so he might be a bit winded. Urquhart inside 450 to Fronfelder. Good kick. Speaking of being hit in the guts, he's come back on the ground after copping one. And Bailey Fronfelder will go back and have a set shot. You'll have to kick this one just under 50 metres, Robbie, on a 45 degree angle. Well, if he's on the run, you'd say no worries at all. So he's one of those players who seems to like the, the shots on the run, uh, you know, in preference to the set shot. But always a, a beautiful, uh, beautiful kick of the footy. Nice he'll, player. He'll run around an arc here. Gain himself a little bit of extra meterage. That he does. Umpire calls play on as Fronfelder kicks on goal, but it's to the near side, a minor score. 8 5 53. The Yarrawonga Pigeons, the Corot rather than Ruse, 7 4 46 on the Peter Bowen home scoreboard. Thumping kick in from Hatton. It's Beautiful. centimetre perfect to Cameron Wilson. He marks it half back in front of the Corot contingent. Club room side of the ground. Kick wasn't that good though. It went into the middle of the ground. Mont, just quickly for the Newmarket Hotel, they've appeared to take a bit of high-risk footy here, Cora, during this quarter. Yeah, they have, and they've probably just got to pick their options a little bit better. They're kicking into one-on-ones in the middle of the ground, which is giving Yarrawonga the chance to cut it off and turn it over. Robinson, left high, got the tap. Now, well, Willie Wheeler was good, tried to get his brother Harry. Harry kept going at the footy, G did well. Billy Hanson was good with a handball release to Jared. Lane. Ball here comes the ground, Bradkey couldn't get it. Here's Nastasi, been a little bit quiet. Mitchell leads in the race of ball, clever pick up, got a handball release to O'Dwyer and got it over the top to Cuppins who had Hatton coming like a steam train at him, one of them on the left foot, his kick was a bit errant and it's been marked at half back by Sharp for Yarrawonga, Monty for the new market. Yeah boys, Kel Spencer's just come off holding the ribs so he's another one, he's just sitting in the bench now, he's in a bit of trouble. Iron spawn for the Pigeons, kicks out wide, it's a nice one, it's a wheel up and it's Willie, right foot kick. In towards space, Williams brought it to ground level, couldn't get it on the second bite of the cherry. Players lurk around this footy and will ball it up. Brad Freak for 40 winks. Yeah, as we touched on, the momentum swings inside forward 50. Yarrawonga up to nine this quarter to four for Korowa. So that's, it's a real trend in the game and it seems to be at that the, the, the bridge end. 40 metres out from the Pigeons goal. We'll ball the footy up once again. Bill Hansen will get up from the bottom of this pack. It's great to have your company on O&M Live. Third quarter action thanks to Ag Boss. Robinson brings it down for the ruse. And we'll see if you can get this one away. Robbie will ball the footy up in the same spot for the fourth time in a row. Yeah, it's tight. The game's tight. Seven-point margin to Yarrawonga. 16 minutes gone third term. That's on the GJ Gardner Holmes time clock. And it continues to stay a stalemate as Jared Lyon applies a good tackle. So the ball is situated if you're on radio land. It's 40 metres around from the Yarrawonga goal. They lead by seven points. Robinson went high, got a tap. Willie Wheeler was brilliant. A snapper over his head by Lawrence was extravagant. Didn't really go to anyone. And we've got a, another lockdown, Gussie. It's real Dan Andrews stuff here. Another lockdown. Around the grounds, Brad Freak. Thanks to our good friends at Mr Stowe's Pool World. Uh, in the AFL at the moment, Gold Coast are up 56-18 to 18 in that game. Uh, keep going, mate. We're going to ball this thing up once again. Oh, the football emerges. 
that we'll have a boundary throw in here. <laughs> no, oh, no, we're going to keep it alive. Here come the Pigeons. They're too far to score. They kick in towards space beautifully. And the mark's been taken by Wheeler. Well, well, well. It's Harry. And he'll go back and have a set shot. 40 metres out. Slight angle. Persistence one that paid off Gussie and then it was just a matter of pinpointing something. They did well, they kept that ball in tied to the boundary line and it was just a nice little finish. It wasn't pretty, but it could pay dividends. Big kick. To increase the lead by more than two goals, he's dumped yeah. it. The former Williamstown footballer Harry Wheeler kicks a much needed goal for the Pigeons. They move to 9-5 to Kiowa 7-4 on the Peter Bowen home scoreboard. Scott Montgomery boundary side for the New Market Hotel. Kiowa down to no rotations it seems. Yeah, at the moment they've got none, but I think yeah, Kel Spencer may be right, but Maxi Taylor still hasn't come back on. He's sitting here all ready to go, but I think they're just going to play very cautious. If they don't have to use him, uh, they won't. So we'll wait and see. Kel Spencer's now just getting up there, having a bit of a walk around, so hopefully get back on there soon. If we go around the grounds quickly, Gussie, for Mr. Stoves, Paul World, as we were touching on, Fremantle down by 40, uh, 39 points to the Gold Coast Suns, 57 to 18 in the other game. GWS 7, Carlton 33. I like it. I like it. Farewell, Leon Up Cameron. we go in the middle. Tommy Goodwin got a knee fair in the guts. No one touched the footy. Running hard, that was Coburn. He went back hard at it again. Got a handball release to Iron Spawn. He goes wide. Looks for Willie Wheeler. Got a nice, delightful bounce on this beautiful surface at the John Ford Oval. Good kick to Harry Wheeler, who he's going to pay the mark. It's OK. Fair enough. And he's going to pump the ball inside forward 50. Symes might be the target on this occasion. Flying high. Wheeler was there. Handball by Mead was OK. Chance for Fothergill. Got out of trouble. Towards Bruce the handball went. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. He's slung out over the boundary line. 35 around for the Yarrawonga Gold. They lead 59 to 46. And we are doing it for Agbos, Gus. That we certainly are. Sunday footy on o and Live. The River Rumble at the John Ford Oval. The Roos and the Pigeons as the footy comes back into play. Tom Goodwin's back in the ruck and he brought it down for the Roos. Ball at ground level now. Wilson's at the bottom of the pack and will ball the footy up. Brad Freak on the 40 wing stature. The inside 50s this quarter. Yeah, as we said, Yarrawonga's up to 11 to 4 to Cairo. It's a real trend in the game. Team gets momentum. They've been able to get on top in the inside 50s. Goodwin, brute strength in the ruck. Brought it down at ground level. Wheelers at the bottom of this pack and we'll ball it up once again. So starting to become a little bit stale here, Robbie. We'll ball the footy up once again, but the Roos have got to consolidate. They can't afford to concede here going into the final break. Yeah, a little bit of fatigue, I reckon, amongst some of the players here at the moment. Here comes Harry Wheeler, high up and under, sitting underneath his Wheeler. Well done by Cody Howard. Got a fist on it. Ball stays in. The tackle, I think it's going to be penalised. A free kick will go the way of Coral Rubber Glen. And they didn't have much to lose there, but I think it might have been. I'm not sure it was Willie Wheeler down there. Gussie, it, a free kick. It, it stops play. It holds things up a bit as Masters can't mark. Ball went over the back in front of Robinson. Coming through with Zirkin. His quarter's been excellent. Kick wasn't good, though. And it's marked by Melcham. Run around on his left foot. Kicks at the centre wing and Jared Lane marks. Exactly. Right on centre wing, Gussie. They trail by 13 points, the Roos. They look good when they take the game on, Corowa. And Lane's going to do that as he kicks long down the line, trying to find Robinson. Masters made a good contest of it. O'Dwyer gets amongst it for the Pigeons and will ball the footy up. As we hug the boundary line, Brad Freak for 40 winks. Darcy Melksham's really got busy in this third quarter. Had a quiet first half. He's had seven disposals in this yep. second quarter, uh, third quarter as well. Willie Wheeler for the Yarrawonga Pigeons, he's had eight disposals. Tyson gets a lesson in the ruck there from Tommy Goodwin. Pushes him out of the road. Melksham doesn't get a favourable bounce and will ball the footy up. Cal Spencer back on there, Gus. He, yeah, just noticing. Which yep. is just ran back on, boys. So he should be right to go. Very handy considering uh, they've got a rotation mm. now, Robbie. As we push deep into the third quarter. 21 minutes gone on the Aubrey GJ Gardner Holmes time clock. He's Robbie McKinlay for McRae Motors. So ball still in the spit. Tommy Goodwin like a traffic cop there, just trying to sort out a bit of business. So Gussie for Coral Rubber Glen, they really, Maxi Taylor's on the interchange and that's about it. Monty. No, they've got one other. Maxi Taylor won't come back on. I don't he, think you don't stage. reckon he'll be back on? Okay. Uh, no, yeah. I think he's, he said he'd be right to go, but I don't reckon they'll yeah, use him he, unless they really have to. Yeah. 
Okay, and they'll monitor what happens. Yeah. I so they've just got the one rotation at the moment. Yeah. Three guys basically from the line through them. And, and Hanson's had to get his ankle restrapped yeah, as well. Yeah, he had the whole foot restrapped, Gus, Jeez. not just the ankle. So, so I think it might be something a bit different than a rolled ankle. Cam Wilson midfield. This is good build up here by the Roos. Find Jared Lane. Bradkey's on a long lead. It kicks gone over his head. Chance here for Charlie Nastasi. Ryan Bruce has got good closing speed. In fact, he won the footy. Had to handball it towards Melcham. Melcham went, oh, well done, Logan Morey. Gathered the footy off the left foot. Kicks nicely to centre wing. And Brandon Symes marks. Yarrawonga lead by 13. We've gone at 22 minutes in the third quarter, Gus. And they kick over the top to Cuppins. Right foot kick down the line. It's a good one to wheel up. It's Willie. Inside forward 50. The kick's a beauty. Mead. Good play. This umpires play. paid it. Mark, 35 metres out. Tied up on the boundary line, but of course, they are quite deep and open pockets here at the John Ford Park in Cairo. Brad Freak for 40 winks. Yeah, Willie Wheel is the one for Yarrawonga in this quarter. He's had nine disposals. His brother Harry's also had seven as well. Braden Coburn's kept up his good form from the first half. He's up to uh, 18 disposals for the game. So Jackson Mead will kick from 30 metres and he starts his approach from the paint to the boundary line. Deep in the left pocket. It's a helicopter kick, but it's a goal. So Yarrawonga get their 10th. They move to 10-5-65 to Corowa, 7-4-46 in the Peter Bowen home scoreboard and Scott Montgomery boundary side for the New Market Hotel. You just sense the game slowly getting out of Corowa's reach. Yeah, absolutely. The Yarrawonga this quarter has been able to maintain the footy for longer and every time they go inside 50, they look a bit more dangerous for us. Corowa keep turning it over with shallow entries when they've been able to just rebound without Yarrawonga. So do they need something here. They need a bit of a spark, whether it's Tommy Goodwin maybe doing something special in the middle or one of the Wilson boys, but they definitely need a spark. Corowa to finish this quarter. Gus, you made a really good comment about five minutes ago that Cora are keen to take the game on. It was just a few skill errors that Correct. let them down. We, Damien Wilson did one across half back line earlier in that quarter. You know, and then, but if it had to come off, it might have gone the other way. So it's all a learning curve. So Harry Wheeler, sorry, Willie Wheeler's won himself a free kick. Tommy Goodwin chased after him. No threat of ever catching him, I don't think. Well done, Howard. Got a fist on it and went back and won the footy. Stood up, handball release, boundary line beats him. So it's going to be flung back in. 55 metres around from the Yarrawonga goal. They lead 65 to 46, Gus. 24 minutes have ticked over on the Aubrey GJ Gardner home time clock. Goodwin took it out of the rough, oh. snapped it across his body and kicked long down the line as Mitchell intercepts it. True centre wing, Murray Riverside for the Yarrawonga Pigeons. He's a talent, this kid, mate. He's working his way into this side, Robbie. I know he has a late inclusion, but I can't see him slipping out. He's playing beautifully across the half-back flank. So is this guy, Coburn, kicks long down the line. Good marks being taken. <laughs> By me, as the siren sounds for three-quarter time at the John Ford Park here in Corowa. The Roos, 7-4-46, Yarrawonga, 10-5-65 at the final break. And plenty more to come here on o &M Live. You're listening to o &M Live, the River Rumble. And on o &M Live, you won't miss a thing. Ground. Watching the game at home is good, but watching the game on the big screen with all your mates, all the atmosphere and the great food and beer is pretty hard to beat. And it's all here at the locker room at the SSNA. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor, able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. Did someone say KFC? I don't care! 
Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where there's industry qualified trainers. Go where students come first. Go for the community. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it with Go TAFE. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. Rewrite the rules. Carlton Zero. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Go to create your future. Go for free support services. Go to get in-demand skills. Go and follow your own path. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it. With Go TAFE. Hi, I'm Kylie King. I first fell in love with this region as the Prime News sports presenter. Sometimes this feels like my second home. I love our historic towns and vibrant cities, our passion for sport, and of course, the people who make it special. And now I get to share what's important in our region with Kev Poulton. So join us, Kylie and Kev for breakfast, weekday mornings from 6 on 2AY and 3NE. Somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. Welcome back to the John Ford Oakley Corowa. Three-quarter time, 46 to 65, favouring favoring the Pigeons over the Roos as we go to Brad Freak. For the Optus quarter's best, thanks to your local Optus stores in Albury, Wodonga and Wangaratta. Yeah, on the Corowa side there, got Darcy Melksham, I thought, really built in that quarter there. He had uh, seven disposals for the Roos. He was really good. And Jared Lane, I thought, has been outstanding yep. for the Roos today. He had, he, only, he had the six disposals, but every time he gets the ball, it touches to, uh, his touches turn to gold. And on the Yarrawonga side of things, Willie Wheeler, I thought, was really, really good. He had ten disposals for him that quarter. And Caleb Mitchell, a young fellow that you really like, Robbie, cross halfback, he's been outstanding today. And particularly in that third quarter, was really, really strong. If we have a look at the 40 wink stat sheet for that third quarter, as we touched on, Willie Wheeler had 10 disposals in that quarter. Also, his brother Harry had 7. Gives Harry had 15 for the game. Willie's up to 20 for the game. And Nick Fothergill's up to 20 as well for the game. Darcy Melksham, as we said, had 7. Had a quiet first half. He's up to 12 for the game. Cam Wilson, someone for the Ruse that's been trying hard all day. He's up to 22 for the game. His brother Damo's up to 16 and Jared Lane's 15. As we said, we look at the team stats. It's really been the momentum swings have really shown up in the inside 50s. Each quarter, whoever's got them has been, really get, been able to get on top. In that third quarter, Yarra Wonga had 13 inside 50s to 4, so they'll really be able to get on top. And also the goal kickers for the game so far, if we start with the Yarra Wonga side of things, Lee Williams has been the one down for it. He's been outstanding. He's up to 6 disposals, uh, sorry, 6 goals in, the first, uh, in this game so far and singles each to Harry Williams. Wheeler, Tim Lawrence, Jackson Mead and his brother Willie Wheeler and on the Ruse side of things, uh, three to Jared Lane, two to Keelan Bradkey, one to Bill Hansen and one to Jason Marks as well. Very good Bradley. Um, Mitch, um, sorry, uh, Germo is still speaking to his boys out there. It's sort of been a bit of a highlight of the year, uh, the whole day Gus, hasn't it? The uh, longevity at the breaks that um, <laughs> Jermo's been able to give to the boys. I reckon the boys at A&M House are licking their lips today because they're going to have a few fines going Jermo's way, <laughs> holding the game up. Well, cross to you, Monty, boundary side for the uh, the Newmarket Hotel. Book your next function. 
with the Nicholsons at the Newey uh, if you want something done there. What's been the latest from the three-quarter time huddles? Yeah, Mons? well, I've missed half a Germos because he's still going, so I thought I'd better get <laughs> off the ground, give yourself <laughs> enough time to get off. But he was just basically saying, boys, if it comes to ground, we've got to be the first there because at the moment, Yarra, they're just killing us at ground balls, so we've got to make sure we're the first there so that we can get the first opportunity at kicking goals. Whereas for Yarra Wong and Mark Wilder was really pleased with that quarter. Thought they controlled the ball really well and that they would just use it, need to use it that little bit better when they go inside 50 just to be able to capitalise a little bit more than what they were able to. And for Mr Stoves, uh, Paul World around the grounds in the AFL games at the moment, looks like Gold Coast are going to have caused a bit of an upset there. 69 to 26 over the Freo Dockers. US and Carlton game, Carlton up by two goals, Carlton 33 to 21. You're going to really test your theory you touched on earlier, Rob Dogg, about yes. Yarrawonga not kicking a goal in the last quarter of the previous two games. So I guess Cora would be really hoping that trend continues today. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? So, well, by, by the same token, though, Cora are going to have to kick, I reckon, at least six to win. You would think. So, uh, yeah. I was going to say, the last quarter they played against uh, Wodonga Raiders, I think they kicked about nine or ten in that. I mean, obviously, a, a different opponent today, but they're going to have to produce something similar today to be able to get themselves over the line here. The clouds are starting to loom over the John Ford Oval here in Cora. 7 4 46, the Roos, the Yarrawonga, 10 5 65. A big final quarter coming your way here on O&M Live. It's the Rumble of the River. Fourth quarter action thanks to Bing Lee. Umpire holds the footy aloft. And here's Robbie McKinlay. You're listening to O&M Live. Thanks, Gussie. Symes into the ruck with Goodwin. Goodwin got the first tap. Hit it straight to Jai Lane, but uh, he was tackled immediately by Mark Wiley. He's one of the... Uh, sort of, it goes under the, gar under the radar a bit. Mark Wiley is a very good tackler. He doesn't let too many Big out of his grasp. Oh, there's a high tackle. No, it might have been missed. The umpire was blinded by that one. Now the poor bug is going to get pinged for it. Oh, you get that every now and then. And what, was it Billy Hansen there? He was. Coburn got the free kick. Kicks it long. Williams out the back. Ball stays at the front. Roved, picked up, collected, given to Hatton. Hatton's kicks a good one. Middle of the ground. They're going to have to really go here. But the good closing defensive work there from the Pigeons. They were all one-on-one -on -one down the ground. Gussie and Jai... He's still got the ball in his hand. Now he decides he goes wide to the far side of the... And he's kicked in towards space nicely as Bill Hansen marks and he can run and kick inside forward 50 with a helicopter punt. Bradkey got a crucial touch on it. Logan Morey in defence, clears the lines nicely. And that's the problem with Corowa's attacking play. They run so hard and attack that often they get exposed on the transition. Mark Wiley, another 40 wings disposal. Gus, you have a really good player here today, and it hasn't been mentioned yet too much. Logan Morey's job on Caelan Bradke has been outstanding. He still managed to kick two goals, but two goals that probably haven't influenced the game a hell of a lot, Robbie. We could say the same about Cody Howard, who's, who's uh, had six goals kicked on him by Lee Williams, but he's played a really good game as well. So boundary, th or umpire balls the footy up, I should say. Tight on the boundary line. Wheel up, kicks inside forward 50. Not the best for the gill at ground level. Wrapped oh. up by his oppon opponent, oh. number one, Callum Spencer. The umpire's paid a high free kick to Nick Fothergill. 50 metres out, tied up on the boundary line. Fothergill arcs around, kicks to the top of the goal square. Williams is the target, sitting in the hole nicely as Joe Hanson. Jared Hatton gets amongst the action. Dangerous kick.
stiff, but anyway, it's not going to matter too much. The after, late afternoon sun. Lucas Beaming Malleus it. just texts me in. Tom Goodwin's got a ban from the half price till half time. <laughs> Seymour kicked it to Coborn. Coborn kicks it down. Gee, that's a good grab there. Looks like Willie Wheeler out there in this brilliant sunshine on the far side there. I tell you what, how good's his football been over the last three weeks? This bloke is really starting to find a bit of rhythm uh, in the Ovens of Murray Football League. And so is this lad. Another good strong mark there by Lee Williams. He plays on. I reckon he'll, 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 he ends up going short. Kick puts his teammate under a lot of pressure. And there, standing in the road, is the galloping gasometer, Tom Goodwin. Got it back to Melsham. Got it back to Joy Lane. Go, run! Run, 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 they say. And he does over the top. The handball goes to Wilson. Wilson in all sorts of bother. Got it back to Illy Nastasi. Handball released to Cam Wilson. The ruse are building. He says, come at me, come at me, Kalen. And he takes a good juggling grab. 45 metres out, 45 degree angle. Well built up there by the Ruse. That's how they've got to use it, Gussie. That's how they play their best footy. When they take the game on and they roll the dice. And the lead from Caelan Bradke was absolutely superb. The kick probably wasn't the best, but it is a good key forward to making Caelan Bradke. Already kicked two today, Robbie. The Ruse desperately need this one to bring the margin back to under 20 yep. points. Gives them a sniff. Just remember, Yarrawonga haven't kicked a goal in their last two quarter games, Gussie, in the last quarter. Bradke on the way. Cop that one, he says. Brings it straight over the goal umpire's hat for a Sundown goal of the day. 14-point margin. Bradke has three. And the Ruse have got a sniff. Scotty Montgomery for the Newmarket Hotel. Yeah, and that's the ball use. Where once Cora get that moving through the middle, we'll link up with hands and short kicks. That's when they can really do some damage to get it into the big fella. But, but when they turn it over through there, it obviously turns back pretty well. Well, that was a great play to so show how um, Germo wants them to operate. But also, Max Taylor's coming out, boys. Yeah, didn't obviously didn't come on on the ground at all in the third quarter, but he's got out there. He's definitely holding that shoulder, but he's out there just to try to give him another rotation. Really braving it out. The Max, Keelan Bradke's had four marks inside 50 for three goals as well. They've looked a lot more dangerous when he's been their prime target. As the Roos go inside, 450 to Bradke again! Gee, that's a good grab. Kalen Bradke has taken a superb grab. Oh. A booming kick from Lane inside, forward 50. There's a few people below the box suggesting it may have been a half volley, <laughs> but the umpire said he took it on the first bite of the cherry, Robert. It's peachy, and nothing wrong with peaches, I sight. Well, his year 12 English teacher didn't say that, Robbie. No. Three times. Oh, he didn't get that far. Year 10 pulled Peach up. <laughs> oh, took him three years to get through year 10. Take him a law degree to get to year 12. Caelan Bradkey for two goals in a minute. He's got it! The Roos are coming back with a vengeance. 9-4 to Yarrawonga, 10-6. And I'll tell you what. Robbie McKinlay may have put the moz on the Yarrawonga Pigeons. The Roos are back in this one. It's an eight-point ball game on O&M Live, thanks to Bing Lee. If we have a look at the inside 50s, boys, four to Corowa, two to Yarrawonga. The trend has been whoever's team has been able to get on top has been able to really dominate the inside 50s today as well, and it's particular at the at the bridge end there in the club room end today. It just seems to be that end of the ground's been producing all the goals, and, and Corowa, rather than if they've got the momentum now, they really need to run with it and really get these goals back on. Remind you blokes never to do a medical assessment on me ever, you blokes. <laughs> Wheeler Harry out of the middle of the ground. Oh, gee, that's a good grab. No, play on the call at half back. Have a look at Joey Hanson, the skipper, tearing through the middle of the ground. Got a kick over the top to Wilson. Damien Wilson kicks it inside forward 50. Nastasi's there. Takes on young Mitchell. Mitchell, he kicks it off the left foot. Goal square. Oh. Max runs in. Back through three in a row. He's got five. The margin's back. To two points, the Roos are running home here, Gus McLeod. The River Rumble has just gone to a whole new level with Robbie McKinlay calling it beautifully on OM Live. And you sense that the 15,000 that have rolled through the gates here at the John Ford Oval has gone to about 4,000. The way that roar went across Monty Boundary side for the Newey, there's a real sense of spark across the John Ford Oval. Absolutely, and that ball use going inside 50 is just improving this last quarter, getting it nice and deep and giving him a chance one on one, Kalen, and he's kicked three in a row in, in a about two minutes, so this is where the game's really on the line now for both sides. Eight three, minutes three in. Three minutes, Gussie, for Brad Key. Three and three minutes. Yep. Doesn't get much better than that. Ryan Bruce has been thrown into the ruck, or amongst the action, I should say. Tommy Goodwin just says, get the hell out of my way. Play on to the call. Working here from Irons Pawn. Up and under kicks going to go towards true centre wing. Goodwin held without the footy. Umpire said nothing in it. 
Ball at ground level, Melksham. She and shakes, handballs to no one in particular. Lawrence in a big tackle. I reckon he had a prior there. Oh, he's picked it behind. He's a bit stiff, Jack Shield. I thought it was a pretty good tackle. So do I, Robbie. Anyway, two point ball game. Thanks to Bing Lee on OM Live. Midway through the first quarter, Howard Williams on the second bite of the Jerry's taking a mark. 45 metres out. Great crowd. On a tight angle. He went the second bite of the cherry, Robbie, and the he, umpire paid it. Gussie had Jai Lane and he had um, um, Cody Howard both at him and he tilted it strong. That's a good grab. He's kicked six already. So he's going to have to kick this one. This is his range, Robbie. He's on a booming kick. Yep. He's going to have to kick this one just under 50 metres. On a 60 degree angle, he improves it slightly. Kicks on the way. Leroy Williams across the face of goal for a minor score. He's kicked five goals, two, as the former Norwood footballer. Or six goals, two, I should say. As Korowa are still in this contest. It's a three-point ball game favouring the Pigeons. Fourth quarter action, thanks to Bing Lee here on OM Live. So Joey Hansen, who has played like a real skipper today, plays on, kicks it long and wide, and Jared Lane, geez, a great leader. He just bleeds blue and white, this boy, Jared Lane, whether it's summer or winter. A fine sportsman indeed. Good raking kick. Gets it to 70 out from goal. A little bit of a push off there. Was pretty clever in the end by Logan Morey. And he chips it to the far side of the ground. A oh. fist from Melcham who's lifted was good. And they'll get a boundary throw in. It's a three-point margin for the Newmarket Hotel. Here's Scott Montgomery. Yeah, boys, have made that change to Caelan Bradkey. Lee Marcy, who's clearly the best defender on the ground, has gone to him now. So, obviously, seeing that that's the one that's going to take the game away from him. So, he's put their best defender to him. Good coaching move and good observation from our man, Scotty Montgomery. Boundary side for the Newmarket Hotel. Ball at true centre wing. Murray River side of the ground. Robinson handball back in towards traffic at ground level. Paddles it back into space. Melksham got to get rid of it. Holding the ball. Free kick to Yarrawonga. Cracking game. This is a seriously good game of footy on OM Live. Three point margin favouring the Pigeons. We're halfway through the final quarter on the River Rumble and Hanson. Captain courageous for the Roos. Intercepts beautifully for Cora Rutherglen across the half back flank. 10-4-64, the, the Roos. Yarrawonga, 10-7-67. Oh, look out Dangerous here. kick back in defence. Here's a go for me. And Howard on the last line of defence saves what could have been a, a match-winning moment with a boundary throw in deep in the pocket. 12 minutes gone on the final quarter. It's the Aubrey GJ Gardner Holmes time clock. Three-point lead to Yarrawonga on the border carpet scoreboard. And Robbie, strap yeah. yourself in. This is going to be a thriller. Joey Hanson there must have had his heart in his mouth there. The kick, he overcooked it. They got out of it, but it's a boundary throw in not far around from the other goal. Robinson did well. Over the top, tapped it. Harry Wheeler ducked into it. Good umpiring. Let it flow. Here's a chance now. Fraunfelder ran over the top of it. A little inside kick here. 50 oh! oh! Damien Wilson took a beauty. At half back for the Roos. They trail by three points. We've gone 12 minutes into the final term. An elite body and paint mark if I've ever seen one, Robbie. That was Very played here. He here comes Illy, he has one bounce, will he give it off? He's given second bounce, Nastasi, kick smothered by Mitchell, ball comes to ground, chance here for Panag, he won the footy, kept it in, what can he do? The boundary umpire's taken the wind out of that one. It's out of bounds, forward pocket for Cora Rubber Glen. what a game of footy, Yarrawonga lead by three points, Brad Freak. Six inside fifties this quarter for Corowa. It's only three for Yarrawonga. They're really taking advantage of it when they're getting inside their forward 50, the Ruza. Boundary umpire brings it back into play at Corowa's end of the ground. Ball at ground level, pinballing around. Hands and knees, free kick. Nastasi's kicked the goal. I think it's going to Yarra, boys. Yeah, I think Mitchell. It's Mitchell. Yeah. And it's going to be a free kick to Mitchell. Not quite sure what for. Yeah, he got pushed in the back just as he went for the footy, boys. So it's probably the right call. So the umpire found that. A needle in a haystack as they kick out wide here. Ball's in the hands of Ryan Bruce, who's been good today. Always yep. is for the Pigeons. Good form, Gussie. Kicks back in board. Nick Fothergill, his 40 wings disposals, Brad Freak. He's up to 23 for the game, Gus. A bit of a quiet third quarter, did Fothergill. He's pressed up tight in the pocket here for the Pigeons. Chips nicely to Caleb Mitchell. Ooh, play on.
Met nicely, umpire said not 15. Under pressure's Coburn tied up on the boundary line for the Pigeons. So he kicks a right foot up and under long down the line. Going up was Ironsport, left it behind. In a big tackle as Jack Shield will ball the footy up. Just for to true centre wing broadcast side. 64 play 67, favouring the Pigeons on the border carpet scoreboard. We've played 14 minutes in the final quarter. Yeah, we're doing it for Bing Lee. And ball goes up. Robinson, magnificent tap to Cameron Wilson. Beat two tackles. Kicked in a hurry. Ball wobbles inside forward 50 from defence. Logan Moore, his kick was a good one. Found Urquhart. A dry told him to slow it down, slow it down. Bruce continues to run. Can't pick it up on the half volley. Got through one tackle. Tackle handled out the back to O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer went down the ground. He found Mead. Mead now, 85 metres out for goal. While he's come onto the ground, no one's on him. If he can get free here, Fraunfelder runs at the footy and the boundary line has beat it, Gussie McLeod. The Arawonga lead, 67 to 64. Almost 15 minutes gone last quarter. Damien Wilson's up to five disposals and his brother Cam's had four in this last term for the uh, Corrada Glen and C Braden Coburn's up to four as well for Yarrawonga. Symes brought it to ground level for the Pigeons but Joe Hansen emerges with the football for the Roos and kicks down the line but intercepted by Mr Reliable, arguably the best centre half back we've seen in this competition in a decade, Lee Masters. His kick was poor and I put the Mozza on him. Mitchell got to work really hard in a two-on-one contest Brilliant. here. And the Roos prevail with the footy at true centre wing. They kick in board to Maxi Taylor, who's nursing a, short, a sore shoulder. Well done, Nastasi, to keep it alive. It's a scrum. Held him. And the umpire said it's a hold. It's a free kick. It's going to go the way of the Pigeons. And you just sense, Robbie, the next goal in this game of footy, being a three-point margin to the Pigeons, is going to make or break this contest. Saxon goes long to Father Girl. Good work there by Billy Hanson. Coburn was good over the footy Stuck his head over Got a handball release to Fothergill Fothergill was good too Stayed with the footy Tackling was okay I think he might get pinged Have a look at him oh. Bang Got him Free kick ruse Half back 16 minutes gone final term Yarrawonga lead 67 to 64 I reckon about 8 minutes left in it Gussie as Billy Hanson goes wide to centre wing And I reckon Lane saw here boys He chose to handle and not kick that one himself O'Dwyer, true centre wing for the Pigeons Comes in board to Mitchell Links up with Wheeler This is Willie oh, And they take it home the ball by Nastasi Wow An elite body and paint highlight of the day From Charlie Nastasi That's the spark the Roos need As he Kicks towards centre half forward. Ball at ground level. Working well as Lawrence. Inboard kicks dangerous to a big contest. Umpire said play it on. It was, yeah, play Here on. Here come the Pigeons. Going to go long down the line trying to find a teammate. But sitting back in the hole is Hanson, it's Billy, and he comes in board, and here come the Roos, the ball's in the hands of Shield. Yeah, and he releases to Cody Howard, runs through the middle of ground, kick's got to be good. Marks couldn't hold on to the footy. Mitchell was there for Yarrawonga. Over the back, he took it, gave it to Urquhart. Urquhart now, kicks across the ground, finds Masters. 17 minutes gone, Yarrawonga lead by three points in the final quarter. Expect this one maybe to go around the 26, 27 minute mark. We've had how many goals this quarter? Three this quarter three. for you, Robbie, yeah. All to Bradkey. Ma now, Masters kicks, finds Symes, centre wing, and he's going to close it down a little bit with another Ooh. short kick. It's not a good one, and a good gutsy mark taken there. Now, is that 50? Is that 50? It is 50. So the 50-metre free kick, it's going to go the way of Bailey Panag who has been lifted a little bit in this final term. Interesting to see where we go. Can he get the journey from here, Monty? He's got to kick it from 50. No, he's play on he plays quickly. on now. Short oh. ball. Terrible kick. Off the side of the boot. And Mitchell Marks, last line defence. Yarrawonga lead by three points. O&M Live, River Rumble, Sunday footy on 1494 2A White. And that's a three-point lead to the Pigeons in the final quarter. We've played 18 minutes on the Aubrey GJ Gardner Holmes time clock. Keep your radio dials locked. This one is going to go down to the wire. Mark Wiley, the coach of the Pigeons. True centre wing, Murray Riverside says, we're going to slow it down here, boys. We're going to play methodical. And we're going to kick long to a contest. 
Williams is the target. Howard meets him. Boundary throwing. Just four to true centre wing. Scott Montgomery, boundary side for the Newmarket Hotel. Yeah, a lot of Corridor boys that are coming off at the moment, mate. Very tired, obviously. With very limited low rotations, they are definitely struggling. So, Yarraonga should have the legs, but Cora is running on the adrenaline here. Yeah, win, lose, or draw. This has been a gutsy effort. Robinson, fantastic punching ball towards Wilson. Good pick up, middle of the ground. Couldn't get through the tackle. He's been pinged. He might have got it out, but, gee, the tackle from Masters was outstanding and as we approach 19 minutes into the final term Yarrawonga have not kicked a goal this quarter and the same as their previous two games Gussie I don't like harping on it but it's a fact Masters kicks the ball to half forward big pack ball comes to ground Coburn was good got it on to Fraunfelder a little dinky kick by Mead wasn't going to cut the mustard left foot kick centre of the ground risky but it's good it goes to Cameron Wilson drives the ball to half forward O'Dwyer from behind was good Mitchell overrun it that's a high ball. That's a free kick, Gus McLeod. And Cora should go inside forward 50 very soon. And Nastasi plays on and he finds Jai Lane who kicks inside forward 50. Bradkey's the target. Well done with a great spoil from Bruce. Ball at ground level. Masters against Wilson. Masters gets a clearing kick. Links up with Wheeler across the half back line. And they've got options to chip the football too. So slowing it down is the coach, Mark Wiley. True centre wing, Murray River's side of the ground. Brad Freak for 40 winks. Braden Coburn's been the one for Yarra in this quarter. He's up to seven disposals and Willie Wheeler's up to five as well. They've been really good to hold just to steady the game for him now as the Roos are really pressing. O'Dwyer, a true centre half back, kicks to full back. Maury's gone back on to Bradkey too, guys. Well, Masters is also playing off. Here's a go for Sharp. Well, they need him to play that role, I reckon, Gus. I think so too. Sharp kicks long down the line to a contest. 50-50 ball at ground level and it's going to trickle out of bounds for a boundary throw in true centre wing broadcast side 10-7-67 a Yarrawonga to Corowat Rutherglen 10-4-64 as we tick to 21 and a half minutes in the final quarter on the Albury GJ Gardner Holmes time clock the River Rumble is alive and well you're listening to o &M Live with Robbie McKinlay not a lot of players around this boundary throw in real 50-50 chance here good tackle Wheeler here's a go Jai Lane gee he has lifted Good early speed with the footy. Gives Bradkey a bit of a look at it. He takes it on the half volley. Gavin, turn on his left foot. Long, thumping kick at the goal square. Ball bounces. Misses. Misses to the left-hand side from Jared Lane. Goodness me. Jared Lane so close. So close. It's a minor score. And it's now a two-point margin. Yarrawonga lead. Gussie, 21 minutes gone. And Yarrawonga bring the football back into full back in front of the entrance end of the pocket. 21 and a half minutes gone in the final quarter. Oh, Thanks to Bingley. Throw, 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 throw in here, Yeah, Gussie. he called a play on, boys. Oh, Talk dear. us through that, Mon. Yeah, he was out of bounds when he had the footy and he stepped off his line and that play called play on, so the boundary oh. umpire correctly called him out of bounds. So it's a two-point lead to Yarrawonga with 22 minutes gone in the final quarter and Yarra are under the pump as the Roos have a deep Nastasi! Oh. He's kicked it! <laughs> wow! The River Rumble's alive! No boys, no, no, no boys. He took it out of the ruck. I think it'll be a free kick against him here. No score. Oh, Because he wasn't the dead. He wasn't the ruckman and he touched it. Take that oh. rule out of the game, AFL. Wow. No, no score, no score. Wow. To paint the picture, it was a poor boundary throw in. Nastasi took it out of the ruck at about knee height and kicked the goal. And the umpire said, you weren't the designated ruckman, no score, two-point ball game, favouring the Pigeons on o &M Live. Coburn got it, he kicked long and wide, and Einspawn's taken a real good grab for Yarrawonga. Half-back, centre wing, kick down the lines, OK, Seymour missed it. Centre wing, far side of the ground. Seymour went back for another go. A nice hurry kick through the middle of the ground. Here comes Howard. Handball over the top was good to Damien Wilson. Howard kept on running. Oh. That kick's a beauty. Mark drop. Jared Lane swings around. Left foot kick. Ten metres out from goal. Bradkey's there. Ball bounces. Boundary line wins. Wowee. We've got a thriller. Two points to margin. 23 minutes gone. Final turn. We're doing it for Bing Lee. Here's Gus McLeod. Yarrow longer lead, but Corowa have got it deep in their forward line. Where else would you rather be on a Sunday than at the John Ford Park in Corowa? Balls at ground level, 10 metres out. Brad Key taking in a big tackle. Umpire said nothing in it. Pinballing around. The Roos kick on goal from Lane. And it's out of bounds or through for a minor Ooh. score. 
two, one point ball game. 10, 5, 65 to Yarrawonga. 10, 7, 67, 10, 10, 6, I should say, are the ruse. A draw, boys. Gee, you wouldn't write into the history books just yet, Robbie. So the last quarter, the last quarter went 24 and a half minutes in the third quarter with five goals kicked. We've only had three goals kicked this quarter, so maybe there's only a minute in it. One point ball game. Masters plays on from fullback, drives it to the club room side of the ground. Williams has come down to the ground as a spare, takes a good grab. Maybe they know more than we do, but there can't be too much time left in this one. Yarrawonga lead by one point. Their kick by Williams is a good one. He found Logan Morey. Still at halfback. 70 out from his own defensive goal. Kicks down the line. Hatton's there. Mark missed by Hanson. Kick off the ground by Fraunfelder was good. Picked up by Bailey Fraunfelder. Tumbling, rumbling. Torpedo towards goal. Symes is there. Spencers is there. He's knocked it out over the boundary line. And umpire Peachy says, throw it in Gus McLeod. Yarrawonga have got it in the forward pocket. They lead by a point. 24 and a half minutes gone. Fourth quarter action thanks to Bing Lee. And there cannot be much time left. River Rumble footy on o &M Live with Gus McLeod, Robbie McKinlay, Brad Freak and Scott Montgomery. Got to go coast to coast, Gus. The Pigeons lead by a point and it's deep in their attacking 50. Boundary umpire brings it back into play as Howard emerges with the football. Handball's back in towards traffic and Melksham got wrapped up. Oh. And he's paid a free kick holding the footy. Wasn't there in my opinion. But going back for a set shot will be Irons Pawn. And he's going to have a chance to win the game for Yarrawonga. He's going to have to kick this one 50 metres at best. As we, the clock ticks over to 25 and a half minutes. To seal the game. Kicks from 45. Ryan Irons Pawn. Yarrawonga win! For the first time in three weeks, Yarrawonga kick a final quarter goal and it'll be enough to win the River Rumble contest on O&M Live. Ainz Porn puts a dagger through the heart of Corowa Rather Glen. That'll be all she wrote, boys. Boundary side, Scott Montgomery for the New Market Hotel. Yeah, boys, obviously that tackle pressure there. It might have been better for um, young Spencer to tap it through for a point so they got the footy back, but he took it out of the, over the boundary line, which gave him a chance to, to put the pressure on again, and they were able to get that free kick and uh, go seven points up very deep here, so not long to go. So back in the middle, can't be too long to go at all. That have to go bang, bang, bang here. Robinson, handball was intercepted by Harry Wheeler. Kicked the ball to half forward. Einspawn, the man again, got hold of the footy. Gave it back to Coburn. Coburn pinpoints a pass, Fraunfelder. Fraunfelder marks. 50 out, right on the boundary line. A long way out. He'll milk the clock here. He can use as much time as he likes. Williams wants it. And he's going to get it high. Williams is a chance here. Williams can't mark ball out over the boundary line. And he'll be thrown in. Oh, out on the full. He's paid so balls. out of bounds on the full, Gussie. So Howard's got it. But it's seven points they trail by. And they've got it deep in their defence. Coral Rubber Glen, Gus. 27 minutes almost gone. Howard plays on and kicks long down the line. Taking a good mark. The umpire's paid it. It's Lane. Got to go. Go, go, go. Got to go and got to go quick. Kicks in board the middle of the ground. Brad Key and Siren. Yarrawonga win an absolute thriller on o and Live. 10, 6, 66 the ruse to Yarrawonga. 11, 7, 73. The final quarter elapsed, 27 minutes. And it was heart in mouth sort of stuff. And Robbie, your stat well, was finally proven wrong. Yarrawonga kicked their first final quarter goal in three games and it was the one that won them the contest. Yeah, it took in the last minute, uh, second last minute of that of that final quarter to get it and it gave them a bit of click, breathing space but I tell you what, what a great contest and we look, we know how much there are a lot of injury concerns Cora Rutherglen had from midway through that second, from late, in midway and late in that second quarter. They hardly had a bench. They come back and they couldn't quite get in front. They got within two points, Gussie. They hung in there, hung in there. Einspawn drilled one home from about 45 metres out in that second last minute. And the Pigeons got home by seven points in an absolute beauty. But they lost no admirers here today, Coral Rubberglen, Gussie. That was a fantastic effort to come back from where they were. They got uh, 19 points, 20 points down at one stage, and they got it back to two. Real good effort.
I challenge you to find a more even country football competition of this calibre in the country, Robbie. Absolutely yep. superb. The Ruse only just sneaking into the top five at present against Yarrawonga, who have lost one game for the year. And the final score was 10-6-66 to Yarrawonga, 11-7-73. And what a cracking game of football it was on OM Live. Yeah, good call, Gussie. Great stuff there. And yeah, both sides take a bow. You can see why Yarra Wonga in second place, the ladder. Scotty Montgomery is there with us, and he's got the man, Lee Williams. Yeah, boys, I've got Lee Williams, our anytime fitness player of the day. Mate, what a finish. A good, good win for the boys. Yeah, I think obviously uh, we fought it out well again. Like, obviously, our last quarters have probably been letting us down a little bit. So. Um, obviously we've got a bit to work on but obviously credit to Cora they stuck in all four quarters and made us really earn that win so yeah it was good we got a lot out of that so and what did you at three quarter time mate to uh try and get out of the way what happened the last two weeks in your last quarters uh look we didn't address for the last two weeks we know if we get the game on our terms that things will happen for us so it's all about just sticking to what we would and mate your yeah, personal form 11 goals in two weeks now it's uh shown why yarra was so keen to get you here but to get back on the park and be able to kick some goals for the team is obviously really good for you personally we might have just lost you there monty but we'll let big leroy get back into to sing the song uh, of course a little bit of range issues here at the other uh, john ford park in Cairo, but i'll tell you what no doubting why he's our anytime fitness player of the day I know I spruked him, Robbie, when he came to town, but I think the Ovens and Murray start to see the real dominance of, of Lee Williams in 2022. Yeah, it just impacts the game at the right times too, doesn't it? He's just got that nice little habit of bobbing up at the right time. Uh, he's done it. There's six goals, two he kicked today. One out of bounds on the full. But, um, yeah, he, just, he, he was a constant threat. Uh, Cody Howard had a great battle with him. Howard would probably get amongst one of the best players for Kyle Rubberman. Oh, absolutely. He, he had kick six kicked on him, but, gee whiz, Cody Howard... Uh, Joe Hansen in that last quarter. Some of their run and dash out of defence was breathtaking stuff. They gave it absolutely every, everything. And I've, I thought Yarrow Wonga too showed great composure. Under pressure, you know, Masters bobs up. Logan Morey, they used the ball really well. And, um, yeah, great game of footy, Gussie. Absolute ball biter it was. That... Seven-point margin, Yarrow Wonga get up. No, it certainly was. We'll take a break here on o &M Live. On the other side of the break, we'll give you the song from the Yarrawonga Pigeons. Full-time at the John Ford Oval in Corowa. Yarrawonga running away with a seven-point win. You're listening to o &M Live. And on o &M Live... You won't miss a thing. Watching the game at home is good, but watching the game on the big screen with all your mates, all the atmosphere and the great food and beer is pretty hard to beat. And it's all here at the locker room at the SSNA. Adroit Insurance and Risk, your local insurance advisor, able to tailor insurance programs to support your business. And we're proud to support our local community. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Looking for somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes. Did someone say KFC? I don't care! Go where you can live and learn locally. Go where there's industry qualified trainers. Go where students come first. Go for the community. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it with Go TAFE. 0.0% alcohol. This changes everything. Relight 
the rules. Carlton Zero. The new Nissan Navara has landed at McRae Nissan with a tougher, more rugged design. Nissan Intelligent Mobility, advanced off-road capabilities and a host of on-road refinement. Test drive one today at McRae Nissan. Go to create your future. Go for free support services. Go to get in-demand skills. Go and follow your own path. Go for the choice of 120 courses across 11 campuses. Go where there's free TAFE. Go for it. With Go TAFE. Hi, I'm Kylie King. I first fell in love with this region as the Prime News sports presenter. Sometimes this feels like my second home. I love our historic towns and vibrant cities, our passion for sport and, of course, the people who make it special. And now I get to share what's important in our region with Kev Poulton. So join us, Kylie and Kev, for breakfast, weekday mornings from 6 on 2AY and 3NE. Somewhere great to eat? Check out Social Dining and Bar. And right now, you can get a seafood basket served with chips, salad, and tartare sauce from just $18. Come and be part of it all at Social Dining and Bar at the SSNA.